everyone. If you're watching this episode of the podcast on YouTube, just want to remind you that we stream live Monday evenings exclusively for first members at roosterteeth.com. If you'd like more information and a 30-day free trial, just click the link below, and we'll eat some cake. Oh, oh God! <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Rich Teeth Podcast. This uh, week brought to you by Pizza Hut, Braintree, and Squarespace. I want to say welcome is a strong word. What do you welcome. mean? You're currently watching the Rich Teeth Podcast. You're currently, you have yeah. nothing better to do, <laughs> so you're here. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Blaine. Uh, I'm Bertie. Someone, I'm Gus. Wow. You were just uh, gagging. You almost went, got by you on Why that Why were you gagging so much? Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. Someone <laughs> unplugged the beer fridge. Which oh, beer fridge? Oh. Our beer fridge. Oh, is this now, warm? So... No, the off-topic podcast. Th- set. That's what they unplugged. They unplugged that. So we just had bottled beer that's like shoved in there along yes. with off-topics kegs. Yes. That seems like second rate to so me to begin with. That's why we're in for a party podcast. <laughs> oh, the vodka? You're vodka? drinking the vodka? There's not much drink, in here. Drink up. Do you have any? There's not much. That's an enormous amount of vodka. I drank a bottle of whiskey on Saturday. <laughs> Did you really? Can you? Like, is that a bad thing? Should I not be? I mean, I didn't. So if you chug that a now, would Saturday. you be drunk? Yeah, probably. So How why, many why, why drink the rest of a bottle? <laughs> I drank it over the course of a day. It's not like I drank it all at once. It's not like I chugged it. Were you like a decent buzz the whole day? Yeah. If, if you're listening to the audio podcast, he's got a bottle of vodka. What is it? A, a couple a of liters of vodka, basically? Yeah, it's a liter. Yeah. And he's got about a sixth of the vodka in it. It's got a decent amount of vodka. That'd be like six drinks for me, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's hefty. It's like three. Do we have wow. any mixes? Two. There's some Topo Chico right here. Anyway, that's a. Uh, would you would you just here that, or would you shoot it and then get a a, a thing? I would mix it with this fi- fine carbonated beverage over oh, here. Oh, okay. okay. Topo Chico. So, um, it's the best. What? What? Topo they always Chico. tell you it's when good. you go to Mexico on vacation, don't drink the water, and then we import the water that we drink on a daily basis here from Mexico. Does that strike Monterey, anyone as? Monterey, Mexico. Mm. Monterey, Mexico. Mon- Mon- <laughs> Monterey. Monterey. <laughs> Was that not a joke? <laughs> yeah, it's totally a joke, dude. <laughs> Got you guys, man. Go. Love Monterey. Uh, so, <clears throat> before we get... Mont Terry. Before we get too far into Where's the Where's Mount Terry, Gus? <laughs> dealing with uh, Mount Terry, Mexico. Uh, my favorite mountain. I wanted to, before we get started on that, I wanted to say congratulations to Patrick. Hey! hey! Our director of broadcast who, uh, over the weekend, got engaged. Got engaged. <laughs> He's like, ah! Hey! <laughs> And we got him we got, and Big we, D. We got you a little something, Patrick. They're they're getting it. Oh, hey, look at that confetti. Oh, we never get old. Do, do we not get one? Oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, look at this. Oh, did I, I I went too early. There we go. <laughs> Where's? Oh, it's cake. I oh. like that Patrick got engaged and we get cake. <laughs> well, the cake's for him. Come get your cake, Patrick. Well, we kind of need him in the control and then, room. Could you like sweep this up when you work? <laughs> <laughs> Is it made of bread? <laughs> oh no no no! Have you have you guys ever watched the, or like look at looked at the uh, the shitty cake toppings Here, like See, people that misspell? Oh, I did that for Barbara's birthday. Yeah, what was it? What did it say? It was har- Harpy for Nerf Day, Banabs, <laughs> and so whatever. I just had them. I had to write it on a piece of paper to make sure they got it wrong. <laughs> Bar- oh, oh, that's gonna oh. hit the lights. That is in the You're lights. about to that's pop. There you go. Watch the lights. I got it. So, do we get the story <laughs> of how it all went down? Was there like a big plan? He's in the morning, I know that much. Well, kind of, but it kept getting screwed up, so I ended up just doing it at home. Okay, so Patrick tells the story that he had, I, I know this, I went through the same thing with Ashley, where it's like, have all these plans and everything, you're going to do it here, you're going to do it there, and then you just had this moment at home, and you're like, this is the perfect moment, and so you did it. Yeah. Was the weekend celebration, the pride celebration, was that kind of a... Coincidence. Oh, just a coincidence. coincidence. Okay. Pure coincidence. So he took away the cake, so... Well, I gave him the cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not... I'm not, as congratula- Yo, I'm not as congratulatory anymore now that I don't have cake. <laughs> your tinsels. Well, Patrick, congratulations. Thanks, guys. Happy g- engagement <laughs> to... Okay. How far away do you think you are, Blaine, from an I'm not engagement? Getting married. You're never going to get married? Mm-hmm. Uh, can I call bullshit on it? Can yes. I call bullshit? So when you get married, I get to go, <clears throat> ah! <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> is anybody, you know, against this marriage? And then you'd be like... Hey, I'm telling you so. <laughs> Gavin would stand up and go. I think that he gets it. Anyone on the pike? What? <laughs> That'd be Gavin's. Gavin's what would you think if you were gonna get married? Where would you honeymoon? Like Monterey? 
<laughs> Monterey, yes. It's so is this beautiful. beer cold oh, or like, not cold? I, I don't know what that beer is. That beer is from the other fridge. Is this like Monterey Jack What's cheese? That thing? Is that where that comes from? I have no idea. Guys, hand me my bottle opener, which I specifically okay. brought in today. And now you've taken it from me. It's a good bottle opener, right? It's great. Just grab it in the middle. Stop. Stop. Blaine, bl so Blaine saw that bottle opener. You stepped away. You dropped that bottle opener off here. You stepped away. Blaine said, oh, is that a whistle? And I said, no, it's a bottle opener. He said, I bet it's a whistle. And he proceeded to blow on both ends of it, trying to make it blow like he a whistle. He was like, nope. <laughs> Not a whistle. Not even close. <laughs> it looks like a whistle. I mean, I get what you're saying. I've seen whistles in this configuration, but no, it's not. I should also explain why I have a big ass beard. You explained it last week. Did I? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the one after the part? Yeah. yeah. And well, it's like now it's, I had to shoot three days last week that I'm going back for my last day of shooting on Thursday. And so I can't do anything about it. Mm. I got to keep it like this and I'm not allowed to like. Oh, three days with silly Take. facial hair? Oh. <laughs> oh. How many, how many podcasts were you on when you had your mullet stash? None. Really? I don't think so. Really? We didn't come in for the... I can't balance this with my macros. You, you can have it. It's too many carbohydrates. It? It's too, just too... Are you not happy for him? Do you hate the gays? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I came out of nowhere. Bla Blaine won't eat cake because he hates the gays. That's not true. I'm eating the cake. Congratulations, Patrick. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don is gay? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? What? You're killing me. You want it? You I, hate the I gays? I got one. Oh, I hate cake. <laughs> That's bullshit. I said no, and then... You have to eat it. You have That's to typical eat it. You have Gavin. To bite. Patrick it's told me I have to eat it. Celebratory. It's typical Gavin. Oh, That's, by the way, ah. I just want to clarify something. Now we're talking about weddings and cake. There was a story I once told about how I almost got Monty to cut the cake at Michael <laughs> yeah. and Lindsay's wedding. Oh. And occasionally that comes up and, as something where I'm an evil person. I would have never in a million years actually <clears throat> let Monty well, cut the defend, cake. Don't defend yourself. Yeah, it's but you're funny. the one who suggested it. What's that? You're the one who suggested it, though. I did know I did suggest it, but if he went all the way in with the knife and was ready to cut the Once cake. Once he was like halfway through the cake, <laughs> I would have said something. I would have stopped him. I also feel like, like Monty, very Monty-like. But I don't think he would have cut the cake. I think he would have tried to freak you out, get really near the cake with a knife, and then not cut it. I think he would have tried to convince me to cut the cake for <laughs> him. Like he would have, if I had cut a piece of cake off of that, he definitely would have had a follow-up piece of cake. Here, he we got have. a bottle opener. Yeah, <laughs> also, also whistle. whistle. <laughs> Are you really worried, like Blaine putting his mouth on that? Are you really concerned about germs? I can't believe okay. I get shit for being a germaphobe, and we just had to sit through that. Why me? Why, Why me? you? Yeah. You think I got the herps or something? No, yeah, anybody. You, get, you get checked after every partner. Oh, we did talk about that before the, the show. Oh, was Plus, that on I, the thing? You put that in your mouth. I, I literally, I, I got that off Etsy, so good luck to you. Yeah. You Who went knows? shopping on Etsy for a bottle opener? I did. I went for, like, beer stuff for my, or, the, like, like bar stuff. It's I bought equal that, uh, manly and you started a bar? With the lights back there off of Etsy. Yeah. Oh. No, I didn't start a bar. Really? I had, there's, a, yeah. there's a place like in my house. like forever ago. That was, like, before Etsy, I feel like. No, it was, like, at the old office. The doubles is a bar. So, what else is it? It's just a bar. <laughs> it it's a bar that doubles as a bar? Yeah, it's like it rotates and it's another bar. No, it's like a, there's a bar in my house, and so I've never had like a, like a stocked bar, and so I'm in the process of doing that. Are you becoming a drinker? A little bit. I'm drinking a little bit more. Mm. Drink a little bit more. Yeah, I'm, I approve of this. I'll following, following, uh, following my Hemingway's advice, because I've started writing again. Oh, yeah, that's why hmm. I drink too. Because you write? Yeah. You Hemingway's <laughs> advice? Anybody? Anybody? Get Bev <clears throat> right good. Yeah, pretty close. It's uh, right drunk and edit sober. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's pretty valid. Speaking oh. of uh, marriage and cake, <laughs> okay. did you guys at your wedding <laughs> smush cake in your partner's mouth? No. No. I hear that that's like super disrespectful. Or like, you know, it's like kind of shitty. Unless they initiate or something. I don't know. Always the worst thing that can ruin a wedding is the best man who just doesn't know the limits and uh -huh. fucks up completely. Um but no, yeah, that's that's a big thing. But the the, the <coughs> lady will tell you either she's up for that or she's not up yeah. for the, the yeah. cake smashing. Some people would love it. You know ahead of time. It's not a spur of the moment decision. Yeah. 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 Listen, yeah, well. when you eventually Thank go you. back on your lifelong pledge to not be married and you do get married, it's like it just make sure you ask, like, do you, you just follow the rules? Just whatever, just what am I doing? Where am I going here? What am I doing? Just don't, like, plan anything. No surprises. Surprises are a bad idea. That's not that's not your day. Probably wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like uh, the old uh, Seinfeld bit. Yeah, I love that Seinfeld bit about weddings. Yeah, like the guy just rents a tuxedo, 
and the the whole point of the the vows is do you take this man because if not you know like there's just another dude in a tuxedo like you can that's why all the guys look the same at a wedding in case one fucks up they just move them out of the line the next one comes steps up <laughs> i uh i was the i was a groomsman at my sister's wedding and you know when they do the garter toss uh i caught it wait it was, wait 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 when they yeah. do the garter sauce the, the, the garter, garter toss. toss okay but it was garter it was really sauce. weird because i grabbed it and i was like yeah and then i realized it was like on my sister's leg and i was like no. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I just like, think I didn't even that part of it. And I had this like awkward moment, and then they like took pictures with me, and I was like, "Why did I catch this?" Like, did you pass it off as a fumble in the end? Were you just like, oh, "Whoops!" No, I, I caught it, and I was like, "All right." And then I just realized it was like this is like kind of like a sexually provocative <laughs> thing involving my sister, <laughs> and now I'm like, I have it, and yeah, it's really weird. Well, that's another piece of advice I can give about weddings, and this is a scenario that I think a lot more people are likely to be in when you're young. You're mid twenties. You tend to go a lot of weddings, like mid twenties to mid thirties. Like a lot of people you know get married. Yeah. I don't know. What's that? I've been to like two weddings. Same. Well, have you been invited to more though, Gavin? You just didn't go to them. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. You tend to get. You, most people tend to go to weddings that they're invited to. When that happens, inevitably, if you're single, Whistle. there will be that moment where they throw the bouquet mm. or they throw the garter, and then there's always this group of single people who get up there and they're like, they don't want to get up there. And they're acting super reluctant because if they catch it, they have to get married. Mm. It's all just, just have a good time. Don't don't like don't be an asshole. Like you jumping out there and like grabbing the garter. That's actually aside from the weird sister thing. That's actually really cool because most time it's like people will like let it hit the floor or right. something like that. Oh, good because I've caught it three times at three different weddings. The, it's your competitive yeah, nature. It's, it's yeah. not. I don't even really care what you it don't means. have to though, then go get married. Like, but who's the advice for? Just have fun for someone like you or someone listening to the podcast. <clears throat> they could be going to a wedding next week. And then they're like, oh, everybody get up here and catch the garter. And they, go, oh, they get up there and they get all mopey and shit. It's like, that's just, just enjoy yourself. Yeah, just be in the spirit of things. Be in the spirit of things. Uh, my, exactly. goal is, my goal is to be a bridesmaid. What? My goal is to be a bridesmaid. I want to be like the lone guy Patrick? in a group of girls. Bridesmaid. Done. <laughs> make him, a, make him, make him a, a double groomsman. You're talking about just the responsibility of a bridesmaid or you're going to wear a dress? Oh, you're saying bridesmaids versus groomsmen is what you're saying? Yeah. Wait a minute. You're confusing the shit out of me now. He wants to be. I want. I want to have a close a, female friend, a bride like Barbara, groom, a bride's oh, groom. Oh, to a man. woman who's getting married, and you. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I want to say want, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I want one of my female friends to to have me be a bridesmaid, and then I'll just be up there with the girls, and then I can choose if I want to go to the bachelor's party or the bachelorette party. You can't go on both sides, or I can go both. And it's just like you can't go win. both. You got to pick a side. And then there's I get poor, a suit, and poor I women. And I'm, yeah, no. Then, yeah. But then it'd be funny because then I got to get escorted down by a groomsman. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> what's up, bro? And I and probably know the guy. Here's why Here's it's why great. you don't want that, I don't think. <laughs> I like, get to carry flowers? It's great. Why don't you be a flower girl, for Christ's sake? Or a ring girl? Patrick? <laughs> Can you give me <laughs> a, flower a flower girl? girl? He, said, he said done. Sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's a spirit. Guess will pay for half the wedding. Um, Make- do you guys, Patrick, do you know what you guys are doing yet? You're going to do like... Uh, Okay. I talked to him about it. He's like, no, we How about this for your wedding, right? Go ahead. The wedding, you can have whatever wedding you want. It's free. It's paid for. No, no, but everyone at Rooster Teeth has to go, and everyone. Blanky be a bridesmaid. Has a button that will tase you once. Mm. And anyone can press no. it however many times. No, because they'd press it during the ceremony. That'd be. They, everybody <laughs> would go to press it when I go to say I do. Everyone would coordinate. Yeah, to have yeah it all go and off you would die. Moment. You would get like Repeat a, after me. <laughs> ten thousand volts, and you when would die. When he says, "I, I, says, I do," <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's going mental. You just explode. How many <laughs> amps are in a tase? Amps. In we have some tasers around. I assume so. we do. Do you uh, need uh, amperage yeah. for voltage? No, you need amperage to get killed. Well, that's not an Taser send a pulse with fifty thousand volts and a few milliamps. Milliamps. I'm just wondering if like they. A bunch of people jumped on you. Volts never kill you, right? Volts just continually fuck you up worse and no, worse. No, volts can kill you if if you explode. <laughs> and there is, there's got to be a threshold. Well, right. I'm sure if you hit I by it's, seven it's million amps. volts, you would just pop. But it's the amps that stop your heart. Right, but Which if, like, if your heart die. is in seven pieces, then it's, it doesn't matter, is it? Right. No, I agree with that. There's a, there's definitely a threshold at which volts will kill you. But they always say, you know, in typical home situations, you're not going to run into that voltage. Maybe no. Probably won't, but it's the amps. You can get killed because you can get 20 amps. But you can get killed US... by capacitors or like open power supplies and stuff. I've here. heard that about old TVs. Like, when people find like old tube TVs in a junkyard, they got to be careful because those capacitors will hold a charge forever. And people bust them open, they grab something on the inside of the TV, and they shock the shit out of themselves. Hmm. You go to the junkyard and like you throw <laughs> shit in. 
is a big pit. Do you think anybody does that anymore? I, yes, I did that as a kid, it's but fun. I don't think anybody else. Hey. What are you on about? You throw stuff. Yeah, th- sometimes my dad and I would go out and we'd have a bunch of shit that we need to throw out, like old TVs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you get there's like this big pit. And you get to the top and you throw stuff in. Well, just give it to Cherry. Just so destroy broken. it. It's fucking cool. <laughs> I was trying to give you an out, but okay. <laughs> I, he doesn't need it. No. He's good. He's fine. I've gotten so just manic about throwing stuff away. Like, we got a battery recycling bin here at the company, and I, I have recycled every single battery I've used for, like, the last three years. In that bat- Did you guys use that at all? And, like, old cell no. phones and stuff? No. So we had like, it I think office? that's the biggest thing that people do environmentally is they just chuck disposable batteries in the trash. Mm. Like, that's the thing that most, most people do that. And you're not supposed to do if that. If they rename them to recyclable batteries. <laughs> Barbara said <laughs> I could be, be a bridesmaid. Oh, there you go. When's she, Barbara getting married? If she, if she gets married. No, no, no. That's not an announcement. If she gets married. She said uh, I could be She said it on Twitter, so don't worry. Well, she Sounds announced like an announcement to me. She announced she was pregnant last week, so. I don't know. This uh, Jewish wedding, they have... Uh, they have, oh, they get to crush the... You don't get to do that. That's what I was wondering. No? Like, what, what, are the, what are the responsibilities? You think Barbara would have a Jewish wedding? Probably not. You light the menorah? No, I don't think you let a menorah at a wedding. That's Hanukkah, I'm pretty sure. Think you might well, be mixing if, stuff up there. What if to get married you had to christen your wife like a ship? They do the chair thing. You gotta lift the chair. <laughs> uh, all right, here, I got... Let That's me, a maritime, let me, like, Viking wedding. <laughs> let me read this. You gotta push her in the ocean. <laughs> uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Pizza Hut. So, shout out to Pizza Hut for joining us and helping us create a portion of the podcast we call The Feed. I like the, the rope. Here. Sorry, I screwed all this up. <laughs> and there it goes. Hey, don't go away. Keep stop. Nice. The feed. <laughs> Is this the part I where I get to get up, up and eat it? Oh yeah, you can. Just you guys don't... can get mad at me for double dipping the mirror. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't drop it under like the that. lights. <laughs> yeah, get, get up there, Blaine, and adjust it so it looks right. Um, Pizza Hut will be at Pax West this weekend well, with their Retro Bong right Arcade. Way. Wrong way, uh, Be sure to stop by, as there'll be a lot of prizes to be Where's won. Where's it going? We'll be giving out some Pizza Hut swag as well as Pizza Hut <laughs> gift cards to our <laughs> listeners and viewers who can answer a trivia question about one of the games in the Retro Bites Arcade. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what is the original <laughs> name of the protagonist you play as in the original Donkey Kong? Oh, oh I know. <laughs> right, save it, save it. We'll be picking some winners. All you got to do is you tweet us using hashtag RT Podcast and hashtag the feed. And uh, we'll be picking... <laughs> Two runner-ups will win $25 gift cards, and one grand prize winner who wins pizza, all the Pizza Hut swag you see back here, and the $25 gift card. Oh, and this thing. <laughs> Blaine, you want to grab that? Oh, what's oh. that? Is that a... What is that? The uh, grand prize The grand prize winner will win what uh, that uh, as well. Blaine, sail all the way through the frame. No, no, no. Show it to camera. Yeah. Show it to camera. Turbular, that? dude. Ah, oh, it's a pizza Pizza's. longboard. Uh, where is ah. it? What's Turbular? Pizza Hut, pizza Hut is introducing an all-new pizza box that features a playable flick football field on top. <laughs> Goalposts, football triangles, and a scorecard are all included. The box is available with a purchase of any medium pizza, including a one topping <laughs> like, medium don't. pizza off doing? the Pizza Hut don't. $5 flavor menu. Pizza Hut debuted longboard. the $5 flavor menu earlier this year. The nationally available menu features nine delicious <laughs> items, including a medium one topping pizza, eight bone out wing street wings, ten stuffed garlic knots, the ultimate Hershey's chocolate chip cookie, a Hershey's triple chocolate brownie, Toscani pasta. Double order of breadsticks and four 20 ounce beverages for just five dollars each when ordering two or more. So they got they sent us actually one of the boxes here. You can make remember you used to play you ever used to play like that football where you'd roll up the piece of paper? Yeah. And then like kick flick it. it and you flick it? Yep. You can do that now. Well I'll, I'm gonna do this while Blaine I'm ready. <laughs> is over there. Pizza in the way, though. When's the last time you were on a skateboard, Blaine? Hit it, Blaine. College. College. So let's, not that long ago. Let's see it. Oh. Oh god. Good luck. I'm facing you guys though. Good luck. Why? We'll go the other way then. Go goofy footed. <laughs> Do you not know steer it? Just lean. Oh Jesus! <laughs> wow! Wow! All right. So, so you hopefully you'll be a lot better on the longboard than Blaine was. So what is that? What am I doing with that? You can play like flick football. So it's football season. Get Let me try. Gab, Gab, did you guys do anything like this? Oh, like when you were <laughs> again. Well, Whoa. Gavin, much better. You play football, at, uh, too. Gridiron. Anyway, thanks, Pizza Hut, for sponsoring this episode <laughs> of the RT Podcast. Again, just tweet us. The quick trivia question was, what is the original name of the protagonist you play as in Donkey Kong? I wonder if anyone will get it. I'm sure someone will. I'm hungry. Also, the name of a very popular Commodore 64 title mm, mm-hmm. by Epix Games. A little bit of spoiler Epic there. Games? Like Not a spoiler. I'm sure if people are going to Google that, they'll just Google the answer <laughs> to the question. Because they're they. jerks. Also, if you want to just talk to us... <clears throat> Uh, while we're on the podcast, just tweet us at 
Hashtag, hashtag RT Podcast. Yes. Had an awesome thing happen this week. What happened to Let's you this it. week, that Gavin? That was a Free. realtor showing a couple my, my house that I'm trying to sell. Oh, good for right. you. Uh, he was showing them around, <clears throat> opening some doors. You, were, you went? Again. No, no, this was just happening. Got it. I was at work. Opened uh, one of the closets. <sighs> Live raccoon ran out. Oh, no my God. Way. Yep. So how did it get in there? Was a huge hole in the wall? Yep. Wow. A, so uh, I went there later that day and found a dead raccoon. In the closet. Not sure if it's the same one that died just between that and me going up. Died from embarrassment. Then uh, got an invoice. $1,500 to For- uh, to remove the raccoon and seal up the hole. Wow. That's a lot of buns. That's, That's a buns. lot of money. I had a raccoon in my place. I, I rent my old place. I rented to, to somebody. a raccoon? Somebody we know. Oh. And he, he was like, hey, there's noises in the wall. I'm like, oh, yeah. There was a raccoon that was in the house previously, but then we couldn't get it because it was it moved on. <laughs> Because apparently they move on after a little while. So do possums. They move on. And uh, so I, went, I hired a guy to come out and get it. I think it was like 130 bucks. But that was just to capture the raccoon and take to, it away. Yeah, take yeah, away the so, yeah, the Plus Aussie, he got a raccoon out of it. The Aussie real estate market is so hot. You, you think like you could frame that as like a bonus. Like, oh, this house comes with a raccoon. I'm, gonna bet, I'm not going to be receiving an offer from that couple. <laughs> she has like a startup petting zoo in it. You could say that. Art- artisanal. It's, it's got it's, a rescue. It's, it's got, rabies adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> it's got rescue raccoons in it. That place was fine while I lived there, but ever since I moved out, uh, like uh, this... Uh, uh, uh. Place is fine. <laughs> place Gus, is fine. Listen to Gus. Play everything's great with the house. I'm not going to tell lies about, you know, raccoons and the ceiling caving in and all that stuff. <laughs> ceiling caved in? Yeah. Rain, the ceiling came down. Jeez. Oh, you're shitting me. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem when you don't live in a place. It's like you just don't know what's going on there. It's 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 a nightmare. Yeah. But just none of that happened. I had when to I, was in there. I had to put re- a camera. I, I had to replace in there. Uh, on the a battery in one of my smoke detectors. And when I moved into when I bought my current place, it has really huge vaulted ceilings, and at the top, at the highest point in one of the oh, vaulted ceilings, I saw a smoke detector up there. I was like, in a couple of years, yep. <laughs> I'm going to hate this. And the, it finally happened this past weekend. Who does that? The ceiling is like at least 20 feet off the ground, maybe 25 feet. And it's like I had an 18-foot ladder, the, the lean kind, not the A kind. Oh, geez. It's the lean kind. I had to extend it as far as it would absolutely go, and I had to get on the very top of it to reach up. And uh, replace. Don't you think that by the time smoke has got all the way up there, it's probably too late anyway? Like, why did they Not put it so high? Smoke goes, smoke rises. Yeah, but put it on the, on one of the lower ceilings or a wall. There's ones down there too. No. What? You put it at the high point because that's where the smoke collects. Collects. Yeah. And sets off the smoke detector. Do you ever see a smoke detector that's like lying on the ground? <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean put it on the floor. I know, but you're saying put it I mean, low. If there's if a strategy to putting them high. Yeah, but is every single ceiling that high? There's. Well, Isn't there a lip where it's like a normal ceiling that goes there's up? There's smoke that? detectors down there too. Well, that's all you need. So if did, it's going to go you, past all that, right, up but the it's like, let's assume that the fire starts on the second floor instead of the first floor. So wait a second. The, you, you, this is a relatively new construction yes. you live in. Is the smoke detector not powered by electricity? It is plugged into the electrical. Yes. Of the house, but it also needs a battery, like a backup thing. In case the, the somehow the out. battery has drained now and it's beeping at you. Yep. Also, that smoke alarm. When the battery goes dead in it, never happens at like 2.30 in the afternoon. No. It always happens at 4.30 in the morning. Yep. You know, that's that's it. And then, of course, you're like, where's the fucking 9-volt batteries? Oh, right. I don't have any 9-volt batteries. Go I need to go to the store right now and buy a 9-volt battery. I just used to keep mine on top of the door frame next to the smoke detector. You know you're a homeowner. This will be the moment where you know you're officially <laughs> a homeowner. When it's 3 in the morning, you hear that beep like a thousand times. That the, sm- the smoke alarm needs a new battery. So you try to go out in your house and you try to figure out which smoke alarm it is that's beeping. And you do this thing where you're like standing in a doorway like this. Yep. Dee dee. <laughs> and you hear dee. No, it's that way. <laughs> and then like, you like zero in. Like, you're like, do you you're, not know where your smoke detectors are? I know where they are. I just don't know which one is beeping. How many do you have? I had two. I had like six. Oh, Christ. I have. I, the, the one I in the old five. house, I had six. I had way too many. I'm not sure I have any in my current house. <laughs> yeah, I think by City of Austin code now, you're supposed to have one in every bedroom and one in your kitchen. Yeah, I feel like on my, on my current house, when they did the inspection, the guy like went to the front door and was like, ah, it's good. And then just left. I really feel like that's what he did. I don't think that's what he did. I feel like that's what he did. He signed a thing under my sink. Do they do that thing? Mm-hmm. Do you know about that where they sign under the sink? Mm-hmm. That's for like termites that they looked at your house for termites. So no termites. When I sold my uh, my previous house, I had my smoke detectors installed, but I didn't have batteries in them. <laughs> and uh, the, the inspector saw. He caught it. He, did was he? Like, he was like, "Oh, these uh, smoke detectors don't have batteries. They're not powered. I can't. I cannot pass this 
house Ooh. for inspection. I was like, I was like, wait here. I was like, give me five minutes. I like ran to the convenience store and bought batteries. I was like, look, look, I'm putting them in. Yeah, don't fuck around they with that stuff. Yeah. I'm surprised actually the inspector wouldn't just like charge you 10 bucks a battery to do that. Because you would totally pay that, right? Yeah. To pass an inspection? Yeah, just, yeah. just to be done with it. Yeah. So did you climb all the way up to change it out? Yeah, it was. How it tall was, was it? Uh, well, the ladder was 18 feet. It was fully extended, and I was at the top. Did you like put any like padding down, like a couch? No. Or anything catch you? No. Nope. <laughs> I was. I, there, there's no like. If I <clears throat> fell, I would. You can't aim. If you fall, you fall. No, it's not true. I've been. We've been. I've been bouldering a lot. Like uh, after what bouldering again yeah. with the bouldering? Why yeah. is everybody bouldering? Oh, it's fucking great. It's ah. a, so like uh, uh, instead of like rap drinks and beers and stuff, uh -huh. I'm like, hey, let's go bouldering, and everybody goes and that sounds like just as good. Crew. He's <laughs> preparing for his trip to Mount Terry. Oh, go it's, ahead. A lot, it's a lot of fun. I was actually uh, so it's color coded. I kind of did a racist flub the other day. On what? <laughs> go on. So um, they're color coded. So like reds and yellows are really easy, and it goes to purples and greens, and it goes to oranges and blacks, so on and so forth. So black is like I'm about at black, which is kind of difficult. And um, there's another dude on set that had gotten and completed a black, and uh, I was like super happy for him. And I saw him on set, and I was like, Drake, what's up, man? I was like, dude, ready to kill some blacks? And then like, <laughs> why is that being tweeted to me? Is that a real thing? <laughs> I don't know. Nah, it's not. It's Photoshop. So, uh, I said, yeah, I said that really loud in a neighborhood, and there was, like, people around. Why would you say that? And, you uh, just because I, I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody was staring at me, and I was like, what? And then, and I, then, I, and then it's and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know. I feel like, uh, that's a typical awkward Blaine Yeah. Scenario. Are you looking at that picture, too? It's in the, Is it's that in the feed. <laughs> No, but sorry, I already blocked the person, so I can't see it anymore. Yeah, the bell end is so, too small. Someone has uh, someone has uh, said to me on Twitter, Travis Jones, Bernie, you should write down when each one goes off, then you can know which one most likely needs replacing. But they also beep, so all I have to do is wait. Or well, you could just press test on them, and if it. Yeah, but I'm not going to climb up a ladder to six different smoke alarms. I'm just not going to do that. Well, that's, that's, what I, that's what I ended up doing over the stick. weekend. I replaced one, and then like two or three weeks ago, I had to replace a different one. So I thought they're all going to go out. So over the weekend, I just replaced every the battery in all of them. Listen, yeah. I really like climbing. So mm. if you if you want me to, <laughs> I can just climb up there. I've gotten good at it too. So I, I'll do it for you. Which is I went, went before the podcast. It's like my new pre podcast ritual. Yeah. And as long as I have like what all white handholds, you'll be okay. <laughs> and, no, that's 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 racist. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> You're racist. It's great though. So do you keep notes in your house? Do you do that? Like, oh, here's the, uh, the change the light bulb or yes. batteries. You I have do? I have calendar alerts. Yeah, I Dude. have alerts for that. Like, like what, like air Clorox filters? In the yeah, AC. I, ju I just set events in my calendar that repeat every so often for that stuff. Like, my dad was amazing with that kind of stuff. He would keep a log. It was in the glove compartment of all of our cars. Mm. And he would log what date he got the oil changed in the car and what the mileage was on the date that he got the oil changed. So, like, over the course of, like, five years... He'd have this thing with like, it was only like 20 entries, but it was still like super impressive that he took the time to do that. I don't do shit like that. I should. I take pictures. That's I, a good way to do it. I, yeah, the closest I get to that is like keeping suit sizes and stuff like that sorted on notes on my phone. Yeah. One, one of the things I did recently, like a little, tiny little project in my house was I went through and replaced all the lights, like the incandescent lights with LED bulbs. Mm. I went through the house and then I took a Sharpie around with me when I, before I put the LED bulb in the socket. I wrote the date that I was putting it in on there. You're just going to be mad. On the light bulb? Why? Because it, invariably it's going to burn out way before it should have. And you're going to unscrew it and be like, motherfucker, this light bulb only lasted two years. Yeah, I've got, I've got bulbs that like, they have like a 21-year life. I it's know, like, that's what I have now. Will I ever change this? Am I going to die before that happens? That's, will I still live here? Probably not. <laughs> that's why I wrote the date on it. Because like, when somebody else goes and changes the light bulb, they're like, look at this. This, light, this lady's like 20 years old. They're going to they're gonna do this. They're going to be like, <sighs> but <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to look at it. <laughs> Yeah, those, those light bulbs do not last 20 years. Well, How do you know? know? Because we've only just started because putting them in. I, I, at my old house, I used to put them in, and they would burn out like after two years. But did they, were they like the 20-year ones? They that we were get now? the, they were like eight years. Well, it's probably been eight years. It was two years, and they went out. I, I had to buy like a big box of them from Home Depot because they would always fucking burn out. Maybe you had too many amps. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think all, all that stuff's bullshit. I'll be, I'll be really pissed off if one of my uh, Hue lights... <laughs> Burns out, motherfucker. You know, I, f I found uh, I have some hue light bulbs, and I like them. Mm. But there's a solution that's way better, which is you just replace the switch in the room with a. I use Cassetta switches, and I love them. What so is are that? you just home automating the heck out of your home? Unbelievably so. 
Have you found anything that I you I walk still... around my house talking all the time like a maniac. Do turn do... this on. Turn that off. Oh, so you do Amazon then? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do I. It's good for the AC. I use it most for that. It's great for that. Oh, Nest? Yeah. Yeah. I need to get that. I'm to the point now with home automation where I have like, I love little projects like that. Like I love replacing light switches. Like there were somewhere LED bulbs, they all say dimmable. That's a fucking lie. LED bulbs are not dimmable. Like they'll go halfway down if you dim them all the way down. And I like, <laughs> I love to be able to like dim lights. That's a big deal to me. I don't like just flick a switch. A and sexy like, time? What? Yes, absolutely, sure. Oh, and, you mean uh, so they ramp up and then ramp down? What's that? So like it slowly <laughs> turns on and then slowly turns off? No, I just want to go like, I only want the lights on 50% in this room. Okay. You know, if I'm going to watch a movie and I want the lights on somewhat. I don't why'd, like the Why do you want them like, on somewhat? What's that? Why do you want them on a tour if it's, if it's a nice It depends movie. on what I'm doing. Like if, I, if it's nighttime, I don't want the lights as bright as I want them during the day. Jerking off? What? Why are you always going to all this stuff? You don't want to wake up, Ashley, I'm in but my you kind of want to see what you're doing. I'm in my living room. Oh, what are you talking about? Why are you about? jerking off in the living room? <laughs> <laughs> you're on fire today, Gavin. You're on fire. <laughs> Do you get tungsten or uh, daylight bulbs? Oh, I, I can't get any. I can't get the the uh, the blue lights, the whatever they're daylight. called, daylight, daylight bulbs. Yeah. yeah, I have to get the soft white, the the reddish bulbs, because it, if I get one of those like white oh. lights, blue, it drives me insane. Just get a hue light, and it's all of them. Yeah. Two lights are like, how much are they? 60 bucks a pop? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're not worth it. I have it. an Ikea lamp that's, it's got like four sockets. And I really want Hue light bulbs because it could say sexy time and then goes red or purple. Don't, don't, don't. Fuck, don't, don't. that'd be like 200 bucks for it. I'm embarrassed for you. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're neat, but you just need way too many. You need to spend way too much money to the point where you use them. Yeah. This Otherwise, is you like you just put them where you use them most frequently. That's why you get the switch done. Whole room's so done. it's just the light switch bit. Come on over. You can take a look at it. I don't want to. I mean, okay. hey, you look, can look it up. You can look it up. <laughs> I do it in my place too. So you Get Michael to come over. He can switch out your switches for you. I brought Michael over to look for the raccoon. I'm I, w I w did you record this? I would love to see this. I did record it. I want to see this. Did you find it? We found it. Hmm? Do we actually the story where Michael, when he moved into his house, he thought a homeless person was living in his attic? Did he tell that? Though? <laughs> I don't know. He was legitimately worried, right? Yeah. That he had somebody living in his attic. I'm not sure if he told that. Though. <laughs> okay. Well, then I won't tell the story about the homeless person lived in his attic. <laughs> uh, I want to pick the first runner-up for our feed segment. It's uh, Roberto Viegas, Vincent404. You have won a $25 gift card. Someone will be in contact with you. Congratulations. Congratulations. One more runner-up and one more grand prize winner to go. This guy says, Eric, Mr. McStrike on Twitter says, I put L an LED light bulb in my storage room, and it was on and lasted for eight years. Hmm. It was on for eight years? Yeah. Wasn't what? there a story once about have, are LED light bulbs eight years old? Yeah, sure. Really? There was a wasn't there a story um, LEDs about a light bulb that had been on for like ninety years? Oh, the fire department one. Right. I'm with you, Motel Cowboy. Why would you not jerk off in that, the living room? It got uh, like they put up a wall and the light was just on behind a wall for like ninety years. Yeah, and then like when they were renovating, they knocked down the wall and they found that light bulb. Did they over there? Yeah, I think like they didn't want to turn it off <laughs> because they were afraid that like the temperature change would finally make it burn out. Mm. So they just left it. And left I'm it always on. convinced there's some drain on electricity, or there's a, like, a leak that's draining water in my house. Yep. I'm convinced of that all. I mean, the time. there is always a drain on electricity if you've got stuff plugged in. Especially hue bulbs, they use some electricity. Well, everything does. Like anything though. that's using an outlet will draw. Because what if there's been like a power outage? It was like at a fire station, like a place that has like fire redundant have... power. Oh, I didn't know that. Right. Yeah, fire stations have light bulbs. No, I didn't know they had like redundant power. You always yeah, see in the movies it's where it's like it's back auxiliary services. power, and it's like what. It's weird, like the, the power goes out of the fire station. And they're like, man, we're not busy at all today. There's been no fires anywhere. <laughs> well, like the phone line gets disconnected. Yeah. Everything's great. This is good. No fire. I know no the nothing. LEDs have been around since the 1970s. I know that. But like commercial LED bulbs, there was some kind of revolution that happened in LED power. What about like five, well, six to, years ago? To see them in like boards for messaging. And I stuff. mean, like when I was a kid, we had LED games. Like there was mm -hmm. a thing called, you ever heard of Merlin? Did you ever have one of those? Sounds familiar. Let me, I'll show you a picture of it. It was a Par real Parker Brothers or Milton Bradley thing. It was like a red. Oh. It looked like a phone, but it was like Logic Games. Yeah, and it was like it looked like an like an old man with a book or something. What are you talking about with that? Oh no, you're thinking. I know what you're thinking about. You're thinking about a calculator yeah. that you learned math on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really that's. It had the guy with the glasses yeah, and the yeah. mustache. Yeah. I love that thing. Well, that's crazy. We had the same like stuff as kids. Let me show you this. In Merlin. Were, when we were kids, there were like three toys, Bernie. Let's be I honest. Know. It was that and a big track. We're like you kids with your Minecraft. You know, that's, that's like half the reason I follow uh, Gary Witta on Twitter. He's the guy who wrote Book of Eli. He wrote wrote the first draft of uh, Rogue One. Um, and he, yeah, that's Merlin mm, right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have that? What is that? 
That and so there's that. like that's tic tac toe. Is it bendy? That's what LEDs used to be. See those little lights that are in there? They used to be like they literally looked like they were on a circuit board. These little LEDs, and, and they were not game. the high power LEDs we have today. Yeah. What, what games can you play on that? Is it Tic Tac Toe? So you could. You, so that was an obvious one, Tic Tac Toe. But then you could play other ones where it was Logic Game, where we had to eliminate all the the lighted buttons. It's like and a time trial thing. It's kind of hard to explain. So can you put the picture back up? So if any button you press, it reverses the state of the other buttons around, around it. it. There was like nine games. Right. So you had to eliminate the all the colored lights, and that was uh, that was one of the logic puzzles. Mm. It was fun when I was a kid. I can't think of the other games. There's probably I'm sure there was like a Simon Says matching thing. I think too. it was a matching one. Your yeah. uh, your childhood sounds fucking boring, dude. Why do you see Big Track? Get a get Big Track up there. It was a remote control car with no remote. You just programmed it where you wanted to go, and then you just watched it go. That was <laughs> that was a fucking blast, I, dude. My, my dad would tell me about this game they used to have, where it was like this magnetic football field, and then the guys would go. Oh, I was gonna yeah, ask yeah, about yeah, that yeah. with the beats hot thing. And I bought him one, and and we watched it, and I was like, "Fuck, this is boring." Yeah, but the kids are gonna be saying that about us. Yeah, there was also that, we got cool There was shit. also like that little Parker Brothers game with LEDs in it. That's big track. That's big track right there. So you'd program big track and you'd say like it, the number pad. It looks like the Mako. I was gonna say from Mass Effect. Effect. Yeah, yeah. I think they I think they based the Mako on Big Track. And if you got really dope and you had a rich family, first of all, I mean this was like a probably a hundred and ninety dollar toy. I Damn, would no wonder I never. I, I don't know how much this. Big Track was, but uh, they, there was there was a, a an optional thing that came with it was a trailer. That could <laughs> it then would dump. Dump, it would dump out like it was looking like a little back end of a dump truck that would follow it. And Weird. Then dump. So that's the thing that you'd program and be like remote control and it'd go. Yeah, you look like go like go five feet forward, <coughs> turn to the right, go five feet forward, and then you'd program it. And I can then, see why that's that's kind of fun. And then you'd watch it go once, and, you, and then it would stop, and you could fire the cannon. It would go do 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 do, and the little light would light up. <laughs> it's like gotcha, that's it. And then I would go outside and fucking climb trees all day because <laughs> try to make <laughs> toy sucks or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. I could sit home and play Atari, where it's like I could play the military game, which was a blue dot fighting a red dot, or I could f play the Outlaw Cops versus Robbers game was just a blue dot or red dot. It was like it was literally all the same fucking thing on Atari. What do you think kids will be saying about all video games? That like, how you like to look at a screen, idiots. Right. Probably. You have to sit in front of a screen. Well, it makes me think of like that scene in Back to the Future 2, right? When uh when he's playing the arcade game and Elijah Wood's like, You use your hands for that game? That's a baby's game. It's like <laughs> some whole like recontextualization, like you can't think of. Like God, a different... Elijah's like four years old, man, it feels like. Yeah. He's a kid. It's like a whole like like, you wouldn't even interact with something in the same way. So there's a lot, lot of, like, conceptual uh, pieces that are coming out based on what HoloLens could be. Mm -hmm. And one of the ones they recently put out was, like, a, it wasn't Magic the Gathering, but it's a Magic the Gathering-style game. Mm -hmm. And, like, how it would be augmented mm -hmm. by uh, HoloLens. So the guy has a card, and he flips it over, and it's a dragon. And then the dragon comes up out of the card, and it's just sitting there on the table. You know what would be wicked for that? and whatever. Get kids back into chess. Yeah, have the pieces like obliterate each other on the board. That'd be class. I play, that's I play a, battle chess in real life. That's a game on the store. You did you play battle chess on the PC? My cousin had it. Yeah. Yep. I love that game. Or like the Star Wars holographic chess that they play. Yeah. They're nice speaking Blaine's language. What's it called? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> this is the shit you did when we went to Lucasfilm. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that kind of stuff. I think that's the kind of thing that'll be. That people will have in the future, they'll be like, "Oh shit, you guys had to go into a special room to play a video game? What the fuck is that?" You know. I'm mm -hmm. wondering. I'm wondering like when they're gonna get to the point where I mean, I know they have it now, but it's not like a home thing where you can walk in place like a treadmill. No, type. no, that shit sucks. You don't think that's ever gonna? No, no. Get nobody, to a point? nobody wants that. I do. You think it's a cool idea? Yeah. Until you're like out of breath after five minutes playing a video game. Well, you try crouch walking shit. five feet, right. like you no, do in Halo. No, not gonna happen. No, but everybody thinks they want that. Nobody really wants Blame that. Blame one cent. Maybe not for a whole campaign, but like mini I'd games take it. would be fun. No, it'd be no. fun. No, it would not. Like, people got annoyed at the Wii. Like, having to move their hands for a game <laughs> for like more than 30 minutes. You think they're gonna want to like walk or do stuff for an extended period of time? Yeah, well, look at Pokemon Go though. And that's success. They got a yeah, but that's on their just as you're walking. Like, it's not, you're not just like, I'm going to play Pokemon Go right now. You're like, oh, well, I'm going to be walk from here to there. I might as well launch Pokemon Go. You guys still playing? I quit. I, I got the boys. So, yeah, Teddy's still playing. So, I played with him. We went Pokemon hunting this weekend. It sucked. They but. found another fucking dead body in New Braunfels. Someone playing Pokemon Go. Really? Mm -hmm. It was like uh, this today or yesterday or something like that. They found another dead dead body. We, we had a really disappointing thing happen where a number of the parks that we tried to go to were closed because of flooding. Mm. Which is weird. You should have braved it. I bet you could have found a Lapras. 
No, I'm not going to tell my kid to like. <laughs> when you see warning a warning signs. sign that tells you not to go somewhere, just walk around it. It's a Gyarados in there. Where? Where yeah. that water was. Oh, you're full of shit. No, it's a Gyarados. We were going out to find Bulbasaurs. <laughs> Mm. So there was there was a muck that showed up at the Capitol, which is an evolved Grimer, Gavin. Yep. So oh, I guess me. And it was like eighteen hundred. And so like the Austin Pokemon Go subreddit was like just lit up with people trying to get nobody could get it, of course. Which I think should happen more in Pokemon Go. They should make the the rare Pokemon appear more often, but just be impossible to get. Yeah. We, we and I read a Blastoise for a while the other day, didn't we? That was fun. We found oh. a Blastoise in the parking lot. I wasted every bowl I had. And didn't get it. And or so did John, Rocket Whore. He uh, he wasted, he said, like, 18 Ultra Balls on it. And just Damn. That's really dumb. <laughs> What's that, dumb? Fucking... Guess. 18 Ultra Balls on a what? Blastoise. Blastoise? Uh, okay. It's like a third evolution. That's up there. All right, all right, all right. Which I think those things should show up more and just be very hard to get. The, yeah, you think it would... You think the developer would be incented to do that because then people spend money to get more Ultra Balls or to get more... Whatever they need to catch. Yeah, more. it's just a way to make it, make everyone broke. <laughs> right, right. Just a way to get people to spend more money. I'm yeah, not, I, not, I also think the gym mechanics now dead. Nobody gives a shit about the gyms. Yeah, fuck the gyms. That's what that's what got me out of it. Didn't ever do anything with a gym. Never that, touched one. The the only reason why we would ever grab a gym is to show off a Pokemon that you've got. I guess which who cares? Well, you'll farfetch. I would show off my farfetched, but uh, which we got in Japan. But uh, then it, you can claim Poke Coins as soon as you get a gym. But it's just like. It's such a small amount, it doesn't even come close to competing with just buying them for right. like 10 Did we bucks. talk about our Farfetch'd experience? Oh, yeah, that was nuts. Yeah. I don't think we talked about it. Did you hear about the no. Farfetch'd in Japan? No. I, mean, I know you did, but I didn't hear a story Can I show you my it. Pokemon? Sure. I'll show you my Farfetch'd. Well, you pull your Pokemon out, let me read this. Yes. And then you can tell <laughs> that story. Uh, remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Braintree Payments. By next year, maybe even next week, there could be a whole new way to pay. Maybe it will be the next Bitcoin or the next Apple Pay, maybe even both. Fortunately, Braintree's full-stack payment platform is easily adaptable to whatever the future holds, so you can adapt easily, too. Accept everything from pounds to PayPal to that next big innovation from any device with just one integration. And when that new payment method comes out, all you have to do is update a few lines of code. No late nights, no complicated recoding, no stress about staying ahead of the curve. Braintree Payments is here to help. Learn more at BraintreePayments.com slash RoosterTeeth. That's BraintreePayments.com slash RoosterTeeth. Big thank you to Braintree for sponsoring this episode of the RoosterTeeth podcast. Yeah. Go accept some money. Oh, yeah. Um, so, here we go. Your Pokemon. Look at that there. Me. This is my far-fetched. Bop. I don't know if you can see it. Hey, what does he sound like? Make his noise. I'll make his noise. Hold on. Oh, they have no, 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 no. Like, in the cartoon. Oh, I have no clue. I haven't watched the cartoon. What does he sound like, bro? Here's how he sounds like here. Oh, yeah. It's like a fart. <laughs> like someone trod on some sludge. <laughs> Sounds like Gavin gagging over wet bread. So what's your farfetch story? Uh, Gavin, what's the farfetch story? Oh, we, we thought the whole place was riddled with them because we just went out for a walk the, the moment we arrived. We went to get Japanese pancakes on the first morning. Get pancakes in Japan. They were nice and fluffy. They were delicious pancakes. JD's You're like, making a face. I made a face because someone over there like scoffed. <laughs> Japanese get pancakes. Japanese pancakes. So fluffy. JD was like... Oh, far-fetched over here. And we're like, oh, sweet. Like a block and a half from the hotel. Yeah. And then, just before we got to Pancakes, found another one. It's like, oh, he's a common as muck. Didn't see one for the entire rest of the trip. Right. And then we learned that Cole was there. He didn't see one a single time. So we just got super lucky in like you a found, half hour You found period. two? Yeah. Nice. My, my, my second one, we actually, I logged, we, JD logged in as Teddy and caught one. I logged in as Ashley and caught one for her. And then we caught a second one later, but that one is now spoken for because I was trying to catch one for Adam Baird. Mm. And so now he made a dummy account that I was able to log into. I got him a Kabuto, which is now available in Austin, down at uh, McKinney Falls Park. What's that, McKinney Falls, right? Yep. Yeah, down there. It's a little fossil Pokemon. It's one. fossil. Oh, right, right, right. And, uh, but I, we didn't find another Farfetch'd. So my, my one that I have, I'm keeping a second Farfetch'd so that if trading ever comes up in Pokemon Go, which I really fucking doubt it will, I will trade my Farfetch to Adam Baird. I should probably sell my cards now that that's the thing again. This is probably a, a peak point where yeah. people are really interested in it. You kept them? Oh, I have a fuck ton of Pokemon cards. I mean, just a binder, double stacked on each page with. What's cards. your best Pokemon? In, in my card collection? Yeah. Uh, I got like a limited release Mew, but I think they gave it out to anybody that went to the movie. Uh, <laughs> so <literally. laughs> Your best card is one that literally anybody can get. No, I mean, I, I have all the. Uh, I've got card. like Charizard and Blastoise and. Uh, I have my homemade Pikachu. Gear, I got a fuck ton of Gyaradoses. Gy Did Gyarados. you ever play the game? 
Uh, the, the actual card game? Yeah. Yeah, I actually did one time. I've literally it, it, it never seen anyone play Pokemon the card game. It was I until either. I was in my teens, and I was I like, watched, this is really good. I watched people punch each other in the face over getting cards and stuff, but never actually play the game. I had some fucking asshole neighbors steal some of my cards once. My Whoa. mom went over and chewed them out. Do you know what I just learned? I, I like when I go back and I discover that viral videos that I've seen, that they're actually associated with people that I now know. Like, I just wasn't aware of them as, like a, as a performer. Like, Freddie Wong... Gus and I used to watch this video of a guy playing Guitar Hero in his living room of his apartment with a he had a cape and he was on a motorcycle and came into his own living room and got off and just fucking shredded on Guitar Hero. And then years later, I'm like, I went back and watched the video. I'm like, oh, it's fucking Freddie Wong. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he it, used to make Guitar Hero videos. Yeah, yeah, he used to be like a like a competitive Guitar Hero player. That's I was like that with Nick Rutherford. I couldn't put a finger on it. I was like, I feel like I know this guy. I used to watch Good Neighbor stuff oh, all yeah. the fucking time. Yeah, He's, him and Kyle Mooney. The, the Kyle Mooney interviews are like ridiculously funny to me. Yeah, super cringe. But uh, the one I was thinking about specifically was, you remember the viral video of the Magic the Gathering tournament where the guy's like bitching and bitching and then the other guy plays some card and he grabs the edge of the table like he's going to flip it and the guy no. goes, judge, judge, and then the guy flips it and is screaming and yelling at the top of his no, lungs. No, I don't think I ever saw that. It's a really funny one. It turns out it's, that's Boogie and I didn't know that. It was like years ago, <laughs> years ago. Flipping the table or getting a flip Flipping on the him. table. I think he was doing his Francis character at the oh. time. So he was like just screaming and yelling and flipping it. I had no idea that was staged though, which I'm assuming it's staged. Yeah. Unless Boogie's a really bad loser at Magic <laughs> the Gathering. So speaking of uh, Nick Rutherford, uh, the second Crunch Time trailer is coming out this Thursday. I want, I want to mention that. So if you're, if you're excited for Crunch Time, as we all are, the uh, second trailer premieres this Thursday and then the series itself premieres September 11th for Rich Teeth First Members. Hard show to trailer. Yes. Like, the first trailer we put out was met with kind of like, uh, can't make heads or tails of what this is. Then we had the screening at RTX, and we've had some, like, some press copies of it. Everybody who's seen it, the, the, the feedback for Crunch on this comeback has been great. So that makes me really happy, because it's like, you know, trailers can be difficult. It's, uh, I felt, felt the first trailer was really uh, made it feel more, like, mysterious, mm -hmm. more sci-fi than comedy. So it's, it's, cool to see, uh, it's cool to see people, like, watching it and actually really, really enjoying it. Because, you know... We've seen it, of course, and we love it. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for it to be out. Yeah, we had a, yeah. A, an internal screening for employees, and I think mm -hmm. every, everyone was, uh, everyone who had not seen it yet was just amazed. Was we did the first two episodes, and then we had to put the other remaining episodes online at the company so that people at the company could watch the rest of it because they right. wanted to see the oh, rest really? of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that made me very very happy. Yeah, people were people were really into it, so uh, you should definitely check it out. I think it's it's really really funny. <laughs> I I covered that in the vlog last week that meeting, where mm -hmm. we we went to a theater. And in the vlog, Matt talked about um, how one of the first events we did when we were coming up as a company is we got invited to go to the Lincoln Center to debut season two of Red vs. Blue. And we were like, well, okay, no one's going to show up to that, but we'll go, we'll go do it. And, we, you know, we filled the Lincoln Center. You know, pe people came from all over the place to watch season two. And Matt was like, that was, in his mind, that was when, oh, shit, this is a real thing. Uh, this, we can turn this into something really awesome. And uh, he commented that that was the first time we filled a theater with fans, and this is like we filled a theater with staff members, mm. employees this time. Mm -hmm. But that was our, our, we went over basically the next few years of Rooster what we want to do, you know, our mission statement, our values, all that stuff. Like, we like, want to make sure the content that we're making lines up with who we are as a company. That was a fun meeting, because we haven't done anything like that. I can think in a long time. Mm -hmm. I, don't uh, we were, I don't know. I don't think we were ever, ever the size where that was necessary. Like, we would all just like... We were all on the same page because we were all in the same room. But right. it was like it was really great to see it. And the feedback that we got on it was really, really great. Yeah, yeah, we were all in the same room. It was like, are we all working on the same kind of stuff? Yeah, all right, cool. Like that, that was the extent of the meeting. Who I was it, Gus, that was cutting their fingernails into that drawer? Jeff. There's, was Jeff or was it Matt? It was Jeff. It was absolutely Jeff. Well, Jeff's a very frequent trimmer. Yeah? because He, he, he trims he, like twice a week. It was the, the drawer was in the living room of the old beauty apartment. Right. Yeah, it was the desk to my left. But Matt had nail clippers on his keychain. Yes, but we were going through Jeff's desk because we were looking for something for the store. And we found nail trimmings And we found in the a drawer. drawer filled with nails. Gross. <laughs> I, I rented gross. The, the theater the day after, and I did my own one with, with just Dan. Did a slow-mo one. <laughs> Make sure we're all on the same page. Did you? And, uh, yeah, the mission was just slower. Even slower. slower. I got you a I gift. Saw... I got him a gift. You got me a gift? Is it a yeah, vessel? I, well, you got a gift, too. Did what? Meg give you a gift? I was reading on yeah, Twitter. Yeah. What'd you get? I got a uh, golden Mr. Sparkle from Kid Robot. It was well, like a, a limited edition Mr. Sparkle. I tried to buy it when wait, they... Wait, you're confusing me. Mr. Sparkle from Kid Robot? 
Mr. Sparkle from The Simpsons. It was okay. a, it's a kid robot made Mr. Sparkle. Got you. Uh, I tried to buy it when they released it, but it was super, but they ran out by the time I saw it, and Meg got me one. What'd she do? She pulled some strings. I think she 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 was able to order one when they were still available, and she ordered two. Why? Because she, she knew I like uh, Mr. Sparkle. Well, that's nice of her. Yeah. What a thoughtful. What a very thoughtful very gift. nice. I uh, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. No. Thank you, Meg. No. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> damn nice though. So thank you, Meg. That was awesome. What was the? What were you just talking about? You got me a gift, and I was like, "Is it oh. a vessel?" No, that's coming. That still that still hasn't come. That's like we're gonna go into our third Christmas now, where that thing hasn't shipped. <laughs> What's the vessel? It's unbelievable. It's a it's, it's a, a cup that tells you what cup. you're drinking. But they, but they 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 fixed the problem. They were like, "We don't know how to make the vessel, but here's this just a normal cup. You want to buy that? Cool. Here's a cup. Here's a cup that counts your how many glasses of water you've had." It's a cup with a digital counter on it, basically. <laughs> Unbelievable. Your dad would have had a notebook. Yeah, he would have had a fucking log that he kept in the glove box. Received cup. Why is it called the glove box? Because people always had driving gloves? Yeah, super gloves. I've been tempted to buy gloves. Go ahead. Now that I have like a manual. But I, I feel like I'd look like a douchebag. Why? Because you have a manual. Yeah, because you don't want your hands slip when you're just switching gears, you know? What are you doing? Are you all like nervous? <laughs> you sweating it out? No, it's like a handful of lube. Very hot and... Gavin's been in my Jeep. He likes my Jeep. So you're going to be in an open air Jeep yeah. wearing driving gloves. It's not open. I think it's a good look. I would go for wait, it. Wait, wait. Really, if, it. It, if it's just for the stick, you just need one glove. But you, get, you got another one on the, the steering wheel. You look like Michael you, Jackson. You, just, you'd want, the, you want the Rocket. look. It's not anything to do with functionality. You just want to have sweet gloves and yeah, do probably. the Jeep wave of gloves. Yeah, I'm not going to do Let that. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands, sweet pea. You don't wear gloves at the gym. Or climbing. That's where they get fucked. Is that where they get fucked? I love climbing. Yeah, but don't you want soft room. hands for the ladies? Uh, no, no, but the person I'm talking to was like, "Your hands are fucked since the last time I saw you." And I was like, "Yeah, I've been climbing." These are. Did she notice? They like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On your finger, they like it. What? Soft hands are soft. I, I, I yeah. watched. I'm gonna change trim nails. Change I'm, I'm getting creeped out. <laughs> Do it. Um, <laughs> this past weekend, I think for the first time since I saw it in the theaters, I watched Jackie Brown. Oh yeah, the Quentin uh, Tarantino movie. Quentin Tarantino the movie. Follow up to Pulp Fiction. Right, and uh, at the time I watched oh, it in the theater. Just as he followed up Pulp Fiction yeah, with Jackie Brown. It's not, uh, not related in any way. At the time I saw it in the theater, I was probably like, I don't know, 18 or 19. I remember not liking it very much. I agree. Uh, and I went back and I rewatched it this weekend. Fucking awesome. What's the name of the guy, Robert? Uh, Robert Forster. The, Robert Forster, thank you. There was a... Quentin Tarantino had a great uh, Q&A about that movie because I went and saw it. It was like the, like the Lincoln Theater or, or the Galaxy Theater here. It wasn't even like mm-hmm. an Alamo or like the... I saw the Presidio auditorium. on Riverside. Presidio, wow. <laughs> that's, that's it's a, a Chinese buffet now for yeah. Hanan, Austin it's been, residents. It's been closed a long time. That was a Plit Theater, right? Yeah. I went to Plit Theaters. But uh, um, did you know that Matt made the AMC, the little clip guy? He That was one of the last projects he worked on before he moved back for Rooster Teeth. The little dude who would dance before the movie that was made out of like film strip. Really? Yeah, Matt was the, Matt worked on that. Yeah. And he worked on like one of those things that like goes on for way too long when you're about ready to watch a movie. It's like the homegrown yeah. CG thing and you're like, just fucking end this thing. <laughs> and it's always like miserable quality because they don't put any money behind it or anything mm-hmm. like that. Anyway, Matt worked on one of those. So, um, but I went and saw Jackie Brown and Quentin Tarantino was there. It was a, I think it was Ain't a Cool event. And uh, there's a moment when Robert Forster is like in the foreground. He gets like some kind of bad news, and he just moves to the to the background. But they don't change the focus at all. Yes. And he just kind of like drifts out of focus. And uh, it, apparently, like that was an accident. And they were like, "Okay, let's stop. We gotta gotta get that right. We didn't get focus right on that time." So then they looked at it, and somebody Robert F- Forster apparently was like watching the monitor, and either he or Quentin Tarantino said, "You know what? Sometimes in life, you just gotta go soft." You know. And he's like, that's that was great. The character was like, he just like went out of focus with this bad news or whatever. And it's like, so they kept it in the movie. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, I do. I want to go back and watch it. Yeah, it's good. It's on uh, if you have HBO, it's on HBO Go. That's how I watched it. When do you think about Jackie Brown? When do I think? About, when do I think about that movie? I think about Jackie Brown at a very specific time in my life, all the time. No, right after ejaculate after you're pooping. Yeah, when I'm in the living room and I'm taking a shit and then I masturbate in my living room. You're like, I just took a Jackie Brown. <laughs> You put that together so fast. Mm. Um, no, it's when I get off the plane in LAX and I get in that mm, long, yeah, yeah. like moving walkway that that's a, in that long tunnel. Yeah, that that's the the big long opening. That in is Jackie a long Brown. shot. Yeah, that's of, her, a, of her just standing there and against that tile background. Yeah, yeah. I think about that movie every time I'm in that tunnel, which is weird because there's like eight terminals at LAX and I'm always in that terminal. Mm-hmm. You know, I always think of Die Hard whenever I'm by the uh, the luggage collection. In LAX, yeah, 
Because in the beginning, he did the, the, the hot chick with the big teddy bear, and he's, he's walking through the teddy bears. Like, Fucking yeah. L.A. Yeah. Die Hard. It's a good movie. I'm going to go eat more pizza. I didn't, even, I didn't even associate the two of those things. He was so... He, also, so I going to say about that long-ass so tunnel excited. with the big moving walkway, every time I go there, it just goes to show how gross normal Hollywood advertising is. Every time I go through that tunnel, the entire length of that tunnel is one movie advertised over and mm, over mm-hmm. and over again. Make sure you see it. I think the last time was like Zoolander 2 was the last one I remember being in there. It was just like, it must have been 40 Zoolander 2 posters in a row. Like, I'm not, I'm like wall posters, like massive displays. Yeah, it was a TV show last time I was in there. Yeah, Some and it's just... Like Carrie Elwes TV show or something. Yep, and they sell it as like one unit. That whole, that whole hallway. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, too, yep. for me last time. Yep. Oh, fuck time posters. What, what was my gift? I'll give it to you later. Ah. So, <laughs> the, uh, the second runner-up for the feed, also in a $25 gift card, is Steven Kazarowski. Kazarowski. No Polacks. S. Kazarowski. Did you hear about that Russian reporter that got shot in the head on his birthday? What? Yes. <laughs> He was Kazarowski like, sounds Russian. Anyways, he got killed. He's a very outspoken uh, critic Russian. of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> yeah, I found him. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Potato, potato. But uh, you, you were talking about slow mo guys. It made me think about uh, something I, I talked about with Gavin the other day. We, I, I sent him this animated GIF. I guess it was a hamburger commercial. Yeah. Where just like, it's like all the pieces of a burger, you know, kind of floating in air. Oh. And then the high speed camera comes down with a robotic arm. And then just kind of captures it. So they basically have every piece suspended in the air and then just drop it so the whole burger plops together. That's something people don't do enough is have the camera move faster than the action in Right, and the it camera just comes good. down on a robotic arm super fast with it and kind of falls with it. So you just kind of watch the whole burger fall and then like fall into place together. Dude, that must have taken a thousand takes. Well, then looking, then there's a behind the scenes video where you can see like it's a lot of it's composited. Like here's the, the shot with the mustard and the, and the ketchup. Here's the shot with the bun. Here's mm-hmm. the shot with the vegetables. Here's well, that kind of ruins it. Well, at first you see, like, that's the commercial. Like, that's the hero shot that's composite from all of the others. Wow. Dude, you know, the guy with the fucking beer fucked that shot up. They'd be mad at him. Why? Well, it's composite. He wasn't doing it at the same time. Oh, it wasn't? That would be great timing. <laughs> Just spill it all over the Listen, beer. I don't take anything for granted. Watching slow-mo guys' videos, it's crazy the shit you guys can pull off. Did that remind you of The Matrix, that when the hammer hit the window? Uh, oh, when the, that's the, the first thing I, sh- I thought of with that shockwave. First mm. thing. But Dan and I both were like, that looks exactly like the Matrix. And then we're wondering, did they research right. shockwaves through glass to see if say. that happened? I know in the Matrix, it's, it's super like overdone to the point where it looks like a liquid. Yeah. And it's really yeah. unrealistic. But it is similar. In a, it is hugely yeah. similar. It's, we should describe too, Gavin takes a claw hammer, him and Dan, and they throw it through a mirror. And they record it at 120,000 frames a second. So you can see like glass shatters instantly. But this, you can actually see the shatter happen. It's amazing. And this the little shit ripple that I think in a movie looks fake. Like I used to think fire looked fake, and then yeah. I used to think that scene in the Matrix looked really fake. And then when you watch it, you know, with a uh, high-speed cinematography, like, oh, I guess that's actually what it looked like. Like when you did the fire tornado, like a lot of that stuff looked really yeah. unreal. I remember as a kid, there was a scene in GoldenEye where the the seven eye dish ex- explodes. They like set GoldenEye on it, and it all blows up. And there's a shot of the girl. And in the in the ceiling, you can see fire, but it looks like crap. I was like, man, why would they put like such a fake fire effect? And I realized that when you film fire from underneath, it actually looks like that. It just looks like balls, like little balls of flame moving around each other. But it looks super fake until you realize that it's real. Yeah. And then it's like, well, that's why they had it there because it was real. But I was so confused as a kid. This is why they put it in. Well, some stuff in CG is like you, you almost have to sweeten it to be the way your mind interprets it versus the way it actually is because it doesn't look as cool. In real yeah, life, Fre- Freddie Wong was was t- saying that about my uh, fire tornado. He was like, nobody would buy that. Like, if, if we didn't have high speed cameras, nobody would believe that's real. Yeah. yeah, I think it was CG. Oh, that's the shockwave. Oh, they got the, a shockwave here. They got the shot of the hammer creating the shockwave through the glass. Um, Gavin, what's the shot that you've pulled off? Like that was like perfect timing. That you just like it puckered your butthole up so much. It's like you nailed. The Probably shot. when when Dan and I went to GE. And I was just thinking God, about this. That was crazy. I, I was like, think that's what I was saying. It was I, literally like, all right, Dan, you do red liquid, I'll do blue. All right, three, two, one. And they hit midair right on each other. That's exactly what I started this conversation was. Yeah. I don't take anything for granted anymore because you guys did that. And I've seen people spend days 
building machines that do that that don't work as well as the complete luck that we got that one time where they yeah. hit right in the middle. It's because awesome. you all are like so in sync. You know, you've worked together we so much. We were oddly you know in each sync other. that yeah. day. Sometimes that's you just got to get lucky. Crazy, but you guys tend to get lucky. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 You that's what like within a couple of frames. Yeah. At super I high speed. It, I mean, I couldn't tell the difference between when the two like splashes of liquid they were testing the never wet. Was that what it was? Like the yeah, it was the hydrophobic yeah. surfacing. So water just beads off, doesn't absorb in any way. <laughs> People are now tweeting us that their smoke detectors have died while after <laughs> having our podcast playing. We cursed them. All right, so we're at 8.30. We're an hour into the podcast. I want to start a new segment. Okay. Because this would drive me crazy as a listener, and I've heard people talk to us about it after the show, so I want to make sure we do something about it. So at an hour into every podcast now, I'm going to stop and say, tweet at us if there's a conversation that we started oh. and then we got off track ah. and didn't get back to it. So... I'll be paying attention. We'll come back to it in a second. If there's anything, because we kind of like, there's no really, we all come with notes of stuff we want to talk well, about. Well, was talking about bouldering as though he could, when he falls, land on a specific spot. And I feel like you never really explored what you what Yeah, you I've, I've got like boulder. cat-like reflexes now where I can fall sideways and I'll still land on my feet. It's fun. So a specific spot you mean on your feet? Oh, yeah. so you're not talking about positioning in the air. You're talking about oh. just landing. No, but you can like push off the wall and kind of uh. control your fall down. Today, though, uh, there's this one wall where you have to get a running start, you have to put your foot, and then you have to hop up, and then you have to grab a ledge, and then you work your way up from there. And I was showing this guy, I was like, yeah, this one's super easy, like, I've, I've done it before, here, watch. Okay, take a step back, I go running at it, I miss the, the foothold completely, and I just slam the wall, and these walls are like this really thick, heavy wood, and they're hollow, so it's just like the whole, whole gym was just like, <laughs> and I'm just like, Ugh. and in slow motion, a circular shockwave comes <laughs> out from me. But yeah, I fell over and like everyone was looking. So I just started <laughs> laughing while I was laying on the ground. So I do have something else I want to talk about. But before I get to that, I just want to say that the uh, grand prize winner from the feed is Alex Brown at Prof Brown Sugar. You're going to win the $25 Prof Brown Sugar gift card as well as all of the swag, including the uh, Pizza Hut longboard that Blaine was skating on. Um, is it literally that one? Uh, no, there's another one. Okay. Uh, there's a so there was a, an incident at LAX yesterday. Yeah. What happened? They there were reports of an active shooter. Yes. At LAX, they put a ground stop at the airport. Planes could not land. Planes could not take off. Uh, people were told to. At first, they were told to evacuate and then shelter in place. So people, you know, evacuated. So there were photos of people like out on the tarmac in LAX, like trying to get away from the terminal. Uh, LAPD showed up and, you know, they, they searched and cleared the, yeah, there's people like, <laughs> just milling around. Uh, they searched and cleared the airport. There's no shooter. Was it like a call that didn't came they, in? Didn't they arrest a dude in a Zorro they costume? arrested though? a dude in a Zorro costume with a plastic sword at 840, 20 minutes before reports of the active shooter. Oh. Uh, so they don't know what happened. They don't know if there was Shit like... Shit just got out of hand? Of, if there was a hoax or if like via social media people started spreading disinformation or... What happened? Like, why? It's wh funny why to say because I started to that. build the story, and I've, I actually undid all the retweets that I was doing when it turned out to be nothing because I didn't want to alarm anybody mm -hmm. if, that. in that situation. But I started to build that story live from tweets from people I knew who were at LAX. Like Sandeep Parikh, <clears throat> he tweeted he was in a car outside of the terminal, and he saw people fleeing the terminal. And he's like, I hope everything's okay. Oh, fuck. Then our other friend, April Underwood, who is Gus and I know from back in college, call basically, <laughs> And uh, she went on to be one of the huge powerhouse powerhouses on the business side of Twitter. Now she's at Slack. She's like, got, when she she's got a jobs, way better career than anybody. When I she know. changes jobs, there's like Fast Company articles about it. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's that's super impressive. Yeah, they don't fuck around. She was, she said she landed on the tarmac. Her plane was a little late, which reminds me of a story I want to tell in a second. Um, she was a little bit late, and that she, they could not go to their gate because there was an incident going on at the thing. And then there was another person I know who tweeted about. Uh, who was, I guess, retweeted somebody else who had footage of the Zorro guy getting arrested. So it was like, I was like oddly building this news story with retweets. It was kind of fun to do that. That's like, I had enough people I knew in that place at that time that were experiencing it all from different angles. I Can I talk conspiracy theory? Yeah. Go on. My, uh, my crazy ideas. So when they said today that there was no incident, right? No active shooter. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at these photos and what happened at the airport. Obviously, people are scared. They, they, they think there's a shooter, so they evacuate wherever they can. In some cases, they end up on the tarmac. Do you think it's at all possible that it was all orchestrated to get people onto the tarmac into security-restricted areas? Uh, Did they put people out on the tarmac? 
Or did they put... So, who organized well, they were it? already behind security there if they're on the tarmac, surely. Right, but then there's chaos at that point. They had to clear everyone out of the airport and then rescreen them all. So what do you think, that somebody planted something that's going right. to be used later? Right. So, or, or you get access to areas you don't normally have access to under the guise of, it's okay, it's an emergency at the moment. I don't think that they would have known that they would have been able to go on the tarmac in an emergency sh- situation like Unless that. Unless they're the right? ones leading the push out there to evacuate in that direction. Oh, that's fucked. Like, I'd be curious, did they Man. go over the loudspeaker and say, everyone evacuate the terminal immediately? I don't know. Man, if you call some, like, major thing at LAX, like, when, oh, when I, I'm flying through there on Thursday. When I heard that, you know, that it, there was no shooter, that's the first thing I thought is, well, there were a lot of people in security-sensitive areas, in places that they shouldn't be without clearance. Yeah. It just, it just, it just seems weird to me. And you, I, maybe I'm just, like, a paranoid psychopath, but I'm, it just made me worried. So you're going to be avoiding LAX? I'm not going to go out of my way. I mean, if I have to go there, I'll go there. I'm not going there anytime soon, but... And you love this kind of stuff. Like, there was another story about a Southwest flight where the cowl for the engine came off. Did mm-hmm. you see that? It looked like mm-hmm. it had been, like, torn off like it was liquid. Yeah. It was sheared off. Like, it, what happened? There were puncture holes in the cabin. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, were there? Shit. Mm-hmm. They, so they lost in the pre- fuel solage or in the cabin? In the, in the cabin. Whoa. Uh, they lost pressure. So it exploded and penetrated the... Oh, damn. What about people that were, like, near I don't it think it window? flew into the cabin. Okay. Like, it, it, it came in enough to, like, puncture it. I was surprised when Southwest tweeted the picture of it, of their own plane with Southwest. Because everything, was, everything was fine. Look at that. But look at it. Southwest look at tweeted the metal that? Is, the metal's ripped. Why yeah. would they do that? They were Why just it? like, thanks to our pilot, you know, it was like, I guess it was good that they tweeted it. It was very honest. It's yeah. just so mm. crazy. They've that never had a, they have the weirdest history as a company. As far as I know, they only have two fatalities. Yes, in the history correct. of Southwest, one is a guy that was killed by all the other passengers because he tried to storm the cockpit. And this oh, was before 9 11. Killed him by the death. passengers? They sat on him and they, they smothered him and he died. God damn. And the other person was uh, they killed someone at a gas station. They're, they no, they pl- were driving down the highway. Driving down the highway. Yeah. A plane went off the runway, Yep. went out onto the street, hit a car, and killed the person in the car. But nobody on the plane was hurt or died. So <laughs> Southwest has two fatalities. Like air related fatalities. I'm sure they've had people die on the plane before, but you know, air related fatalities, which is one the guy who got smothered by the other passengers and a person who was killed when their car was struck by a Southwest yeah. plane. Uh, it's just, I shouldn't laugh. I mean, a person died, but it's yeah. like, that's crazy. It was, a, it was a kid in a car seat. Oh, was it really? It was. It was I never terrible. knew that. Terrible. Now you extra shouldn't laugh. Uh, so that, that's a photo of, uh, it's not a great photo of the, the fuselage. Like I'm, a, I'm the, so horribly bummed now about the kid who died. Yeah, it was terrible. It was I mean, a, it's just a, like going Chicago down the Midway, road and a fucking plane hits you. I saw the one of the worst dash cam footages I've footages that I've ever seen. Oh, don't tell me. It's I think I know it's one. So okay, the car filming is on this side, right? Mm. There's a big old truck coming down the other side. Oh yeah. Over guy comes in for the overtake, botches it. He knows he has to duck back in. He kind of skids like this. They end up skidding like this, hit the truck, and. It spins and three people fly out. Yeah. And two of them get hit by the car that's filming coming the other way. Can you imagine being tossed out of a moving car and hitting a car? You know, you've hit a car and then you come backwards and get hit by a different car. <laughs> Here's, like, you get you hit by three cars, basically, including the one you're in. Here's what I think about that. Whenever I see one of those horrible dash cam footages of uh, <laughs> people flying out of a car, all I can think is there's a lot of G-forces at play there. And also, if you get tossed out of a car... Your chances are you didn't make a clean exit from the car. You didn't just like hit the window perfect. Yeah, yeah you and like shut, bang the limo you, too on you, the way. They're out. probably knocked out by the time they leave the car. You know, they probably hit something on the way out. It it like opened up like a tin can. Do you <sighs> feel compelled to look into that and be like, do these people survive? And yeah, you... yeah. One of the, one of them died. The driver died. Oh, see, I think everyone who flew out lived. Are you shitting me? Well, so, at least two of them, because any, three people flew out. Anytime I see one of those videos, I don't watch it unless I know that they all survived. Like, I can't, just I, don't want to see someone I can't die. bear yeah, to watch I, a person die. I've unsubscribed from a lot of subreddits, because I don't want to see, like, like, like that WTF? kind of stuff. Like WTF? Yeah, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. WTF like, has become... You know there's a, there's a subreddit called Watch People Die. Yeah, I do not I want... I know that exists because they reference it so much I in the WTF. I do not want to see any of that stuff. I don't yeah. know who's into that. Let me tell you, what the, what's the worst subreddit? We're on this topic. What's the worst subreddit? I don't want to... Besides ours, no, I'm just uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what is the worst subreddit? Uh, I don't that, was, know. that was a joke, by the way. Uh, I would, I'm gonna go home to a massive th- thread about that I said that. Like uh, 5050 space dicks. The, I think the what? worst. Honestly, I think the worst subreddit on Reddit. It ruins Reddit. Is writing prompts. Oh, I, 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 I 
I fucking hate writing prompts. It's, yeah. It What's ruins writing it. prompts. It's just like, oh, here's a prompt. President Obama was shot today uh, by uh, a Canadian national. Oh, and it'll be like on the front page of Reddit yeah, and as like, a prompt. What? And it's like, oh, it's a writing prompt. It's like, this is a, this is a, like a pseudo news aggregation site. They put in this like, People's like little fantasy writing projects, like in this thing. It's I like I think the prompts are all stupid. But they're all, they're about, all stupid. <laughs> Reddit are all about you know whatever you can t you can do whatever on this platform, right? Yeah, they're very sort of free speech in that. Yeah, but writing prompts should not be a default subreddit. Top of jokes. I'm today. fine with that subreddit existing. Have fun. Have a blast. But having these like weird fake false headlines, mm -hmm. something in the middle with a little WP at the end. It's do just you like, think? Do you think it's wrong to use footage as? I don't know. Like imagine, imagine that footage, of, footage the, of the guys, ever of for anything. the guys flying out of the car, and then it just says wear a seatbelt. Like that's the best example of wear a seatbelt I've ever seen in my life. I think you would need permission from family. the family to use it in that way. Yeah, but do you I think mean, that should be used like on TV? I think they should show it in like driver's ed classes. Yeah, yeah. I also think we should have to go through driver's ed like every seven years. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I I run in. Austin is filled with terrible drivers. It, 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 like little stuff. Like there's no way to communicate to the population at large, people have these ideas about the way that they're supposed to drive and they're just not right. Like the way that people merge, the way people merge is just they're just wrong. Mm -hmm. And they well, think they're right. They, there it, there like, was that super popular video on Reddit a couple days ago. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. the, you, you should only use the left lane for passing or, right, that's what it was. Yeah. And uh, there were tons of people in the comments who were like, oh, I didn't realize that or I didn't know this was the that's, case. That's exactly what made me think about this is that right there. Right. Yeah, and they gave like scenarios as to why like it's more dangerous for you to not be driving faster in that lane, or not just to use it for passing. And they, they even had like, statistics about how if you're going the speed limit in that lane, it's still potentially more dangerous than if you just moved over. Because mm. so why it, don't it, they have messages like that on the boards? I think they they do. There's even signs, but people just ignore them. Less uh, lanes for passing only. Yeah, they all just, the way on 35 to Dallas is mm -hmm. that sign. Uh, I got another thing I want to read here. I somebody said I had a story about April Underwood that I didn't go back to. No? No. She we, was just on the tarmac and couldn't get in to we the thing. And so I retweeted her thing as I, well. Your, your uh, conspiracy theory is really eerie. I, really, I always dig that kind of shit, but you've never, I've never heard of a conspiracy theory that I, prophesizes I've something I've got a like lot that. of good conspiracy theories. We oh, should, let's we talk should, afterwards. We should talk more. People want me to finish my plane story. Take me two seconds. Okay, go, 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 go. You look like uh, which is, I had to go to... For the first time ever, I flew into Ontario, California. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, because it always shows up, right? Right. It's really not... They showed us a nearby it, airport. It looks far. It's not nearby. It looks far. It's an hour. Like, people who were on the set... Uh, I, I go into big detail about how sets work, but your call time, if you shoot until 2 in the morning by SAG rules, which is the Screen Actors Guild union, a lot of unions, you have a turnaround time, a minimum turnaround time. So if you finish at 2 in the morning... You can't start the next day until 2 p.m. Hmm. So over the course of a week, you usually shoot about six, five or six days a week, and then you get a break. Over the course of a week, that time just keeps slipping later and later because you go later and later. Right. So you tend to shoot a lot of your night stuff later in the week. Well, as we got to like people coming to the set at 5 o'clock, they were driving from L.A. to Ontario. Some of them were driving for two hours. Through and Ontario hour? is like part of L.A. It's like in the L.A. Metroplex. Yeah, it's east of LA. And they, were, they had a two hour commute to the set. And I was just like, wow. I felt bad that I was staying in a hotel like two minutes away. You, if you, you would think they would do the same thing. Just find a hotel nearby. They, they were doing it. A lot of them were doing it by the end of the week. Because it was round trip? Yeah. Fuck. Forget about I, it. I just happened to be there. Like some of my scenes were on the first day of the shooting. So and that sounded like that sounded. Yeah. Yeah. First, first, day, first, day, of of, first day of filming. Thank you. Uh, and so. Uh, they were figuring that stuff out, and I think a lot of them are going to end up staying. There are a few there. places in the world where, if you map it, use Google Maps, say you have to go five miles or something, LA and London, you can easily go over an hour just to travel like five miles. Yeah, there's there's been times when I've been in London and I've looked at the driving time and thought, let me check the walking time. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay, no, walking is way faster than trying to get yep. in a car right now and just walk. You're like, oh, three miles, okay, fine, let's just walk it. Yeah, a lot of the super pedestrianized cities are you might as well walk or bike, honestly, or get in the tube. Look on the tube. Oh, the tube. tubes. I've got a problem with the tube. And I'm going to tell you about it as soon as I Wait, finish. Wait, I'm not almost done with oh, my story. I thought you were done. Sorry, sorry. So I was flying back from Ontario, California. And I was connecting through Phoenix because I had to fly American. There's no direct, there's no direct between Ontario and no, Austin. Why don't you go to LAX? Because uh, it was an hour away. And I had to like, I, it worked out I was leaving like 6.20 in the morning. I just wanted to get back and see the kids. And I wrapped at like 3 and barely made it to my 6.20 flight. To get to my 6.20 flight, sit there for an hour on the tarmac. Waiting because this was the dumbest reason ever. There was a discrepancy between the maintenance of the plane and what was in the logbook. Mm. Everything in the plane was fine, 
but there was a discrepancy in the logbook. So they had to get it corrected, and it took like 40 minutes. Very serious. But I only had like an hour connection, okay? So I'm eating into that with this 40-minute delay. So we uh, on the, the plane. sucks for connections, too. It does suck because it's an enormous airport. It's like long hauls, and you got you to run up, then run over, then run down. Yeah. And there's no tram or yep. that, as far as I know. It's Terrible. like you can literally like run like a mile and a half, it feels like, to make mm-hmm. a connection. Um, so we made up some time in the air, and I was landing at the Phoenix airport 20 minutes before my next flight took off. So it's already boarding by the time I'm landing. <laughs> And I probably have like five or ten minutes to make it to run to that plane. You and must get have on been it. fidgety as that plane. You have to get off the plane, deal with that whole. I, I had like one foot like in the aisle, like this, like this, and uh, jumped up, grabbed all my stuff, got off the plane. Best thing ever. My plane landed at gate B11. My plane that I was going to was at B12. That I walked never out happens. the door. It was already boarding. I walked right back in the door. My total nice. time in the Phoenix airport was about 34 seconds. It was amazing. How it bad never ass, happened. That's How a, badass must that have looked to people stood in the airport? A guy comes off one plane, turns out, goes on a different one. That's exactly that's how, how like it works. Fans like Bert, Bertie, Bertie. He just walks Peace. into another room. <laughs> and I even like came like out of the gate. I ran up to the gate agent. I go, uh, "Have you called Platinum yet? Because that's my that's my mm-hmm. board on that group." And she goes, "No, but I can take it now." She goes, "I'm just about to start boarding." So I beep and I walked right up. <laughs> wow. So I was like, so literally, early. yeah. I had that almost one other time where Gavin was waiting at a gate for me, and like. I walked up. So that sounds romantic. I walked up to Gavin to say hi, and right as I was walking up to him, they called my group, so I just kept walking past Gavin and just got right <laughs> on the plane. He said that was perfect timing. But this was all my years of traveling. That's great. That's never happened. 34 seconds is the perfect amount of time to I spend in the Phoenix like, Airport. Like, I almost pulled like a U-turn, Gus, and mm-hmm. I just went in a different door. Like it was Grandpa really awesome. Simpson. All right, I'm going to read this now. Okay. I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. With Squarespace, sites look professionally designed regardless of your skill level. There's no coding required. They offer intuitive, easy-to-use tools to help you along the way, and you get a free domain name if you sign up for one year. Start your free trial site today at squarespace.com slash roosterteeth. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use offer code roosterteeth to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. You could build a website dedicated to that piece of cake right there. To square cake. BernieSquareCake.com. There you go. That's that's a free one. You can. I mean, it's not free. you got to pay for it, but you, that's just an idea you can have. Uh, it's gone. Um, <laughs> what? What's going? On? So Squarespace, you should obviously have a website. Go to Squarespace. What was the last time you used to flight? Um, I don't know. Can't if can't remember the last time I missed a flight. I missed. I, a missed, f- I actually I missed a connection at one point. Um, I've never missed was, like the first leg of a flight. Yeah, when I was coming back, I think from Mexico, I had a connection in Houston, mm. and it was the last flight from Houston to Austin of the day, and because of weather, we were delayed. And by the time I landed, the plane was gone. So I just rented a car and drove from Houston, Austin. I, I missed a flight to San Francisco last weekend. Were you just late to the airport? I was. I got blackout drunk for a <laughs> secret project for Rooster Teeth, and I got sick right before, and I showed up late, and I just missed my flight. And the I had to go through like rush hour to get there, and it was what, the hardest. One time years oh. ago. Before, what are you talking about? What you missed the flight for? I for that thing that you picked up that person for from. The, the project, the drug deal. Yes. With, oh, right. With the, with the drinking. You, you missed your, uh, you missed your flight to Star Wars too, though. Yeah. <laughs> Do we ever talk about that? No. Yeah. We go. We got invited to go up to be on the Star Wars podcast. Blaine was. Were you in L.A.? He missed his fucking flight, and he was like two and a half hours late to Star Wars to the Lucas. We film. you. How our you hotel miss- was. Uh, here's LAX. And then here's all of Los Angeles, and our hotel was over here. And I left like at like 4 a.m. in the morning Where was to it get again? there. He's over there. Oh, it was over so there. So we're here. Okay, it was at arm's length away. It was this far away. It was so fucking far. Yeah. And then, man, I got pranked like three times that day. That yeah, they were fucking the Star Wars and the Lucasfilm guys were having a blast, like pranking him. Yeah, they had a blast. Why is I'm gonna go back a minute. Go on. Why is the tube a tube? What do you mean? Why because is it a tunnel? It's inconvenient as fuck when you are mm-hmm. tall and you're standing up against the wall and the wall's not straight and it's like it's curved in oh i see what you mean well yeah where the doors are yeah why don't they just make it a box why is it a fucking tube aerodynamic <laughs> it's up. a pain in the ass like you're being like squished up over there like in the corner the worst thing about the tube is not that the worst thing is there's no damn phone signal but on all the japanese ones it's like five bars down there mm-hmm. somehow how you're does that work? S- you ever seen a guy, I feel like this happens a lot on tubes or, or trains. <laughs> you ever seen a guy masturbating in a train? 
No. Yeah. Okay. Have you? Uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen public masturbation before. So, anyways, was he trying to hide it, or was he just? You're the one who brought it up. Don't so anyways it. Well, no, it's just, I, I was curious. It, it went nowhere, so I'm gonna shut down the. Did so he finish? What was your experience watching a dude jack off on the? Well, train? there was a guy in class once. Did they dim the and lights? And then I've seen a homeless guy jack off. What's up? What? Did they dim the lights? What do you mean? When he was jacking off? No. Huh? No. So, what's that other story you wanted to talk about, Gus? It was it. The tube. Fuck. Um, have weird. you found that this year is like the year of? We're sorry, we have to wait here because the gate is occupied. Yeah, get that a lot? airline travel's been nuts this it's year. It's like, it's all broken. It's also it's the year up. of awesome celebrities dying. Fucking Gene Wilder, man. Yeah, man, that sucks. There's been, a, there's been a couple, like, super shitty things in the last week that have just, like, I'm just like, oh, my God. And Gene Wilder dying is, like, kind of a cherry on top of that stuff. Yeah. It's just, like, such a bummer because he's, like, such a nice guy. Mm. Although there's kind of a weird thing with Gene Wilder dying. Don't ruin it. What Did you say? No, no, it's, it's not about him. Okay. It's, about, it's about other people. Is that... Everyone, and I get why they're doing it, uh, everyone's posting pictures of him and Gilda Radner, because Gilda Radner died at a very young age from some type of cancer, I think ovarian cancer, Yeah. Um, which is super sad. I remember when I was a kid when Gilda Radner died, and, uh, and I believe they were married, but anyway, they were partners at the very least, and there's a lot of people posting photos of like Gene Wilder and Gilda Radner together saying, oh, they're you know, reunited, this like upbeat thing. He was married for 25 years. Totally skipping Gene Wilder. over that wife. What's that? They're just totally skipping over. Yeah, it's her. just like I'm sure you know, she had to kind of deal with the whole Gilda Radner thing her whole life. You know that Gene was married to this woman previously who passed away that people knew because she was very famous. And mm. then, but it's weird when your husband dies and it's like you know they're referencing this woman over and over again from 25 years ago. It's anyway, something you don't think about, but I don't know. It just makes me feel bad for his wife, who I believe her name is Karen. So I guess that's weird. I, I, I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like you don't think about those those kinds of things when you're on social media, but it's like that role he does in Willy Wonka, nails class. it. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. No it? stunt man, he just does it. It's wicked. Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. If you haven't seen those, you should go watch them. What's the movie where he's in blackface? Oh, is it Blazing Saddles? No, no it it's one with him and it's where he's, uh, Richard Pryor. And he's yeah, they're on a, like is a it train Silver Streak? Yeah, Silver Streak. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. Doesn't really age well that much. No, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. So. Earlier, going back to an earlier conversation, I forgot about this till right now. You were talking about Blaine missing flights. I saw this video a few weeks ago of a Ryanair flight where this guy missed his flight. You can see I've got it up over here. There's a video of it. He got to the jet bridge. His plane was gone. Well, how did he get to the jet bridge? He stormed his way on. He fucking chucks his luggage and jumps down and chases after the plane on the runway. That's a good job. That was like an eight-foot jump. Is he trying to steal He's trying to get him the luggage car. He's trying to get the guy to give him a ride. The guy says no and starts driving off. So he fucking legs it for the goddamn plane. They arrest this guy? Uh, They let him get on the plane, and then they arrested him when they landed. Really? I don't know how he gets on the plane at this point. Nor do I. Well, I mean, those Ryanair planes aren't the fastest. That guy is running from someone who's trying to kill him. Right. The height. I guess he jumped down that This is lunacy. He's running, he's running from someone who's trying to kill him. That's the only explanation for why you're joining Dude, he is trying to get out of the fuck country. He's getting stopped by employees who are pointing the direction. Oh, your plane went that way. <laughs> That's those are helpful plane. airline employees. That's how you get, like, sucked into one of those fucking turbine things on the jet. Lost style. Have you ever flown Ryanair? Awful. Dog. Yeah? Dog shit. Mm. It's like one of those airlines that uh, charges you for everything, right? Yeah. Like, like, even, su- even being the able illusion to choose your- of super cheap flying, but you end up... Spending a, a Virgin is definitely losing it for me because they uh they fucked me over on that last flight. Yeah, Virgin's overrated. She went up to Branson last week. Although I'll be <laughs> very excited when Alaska finally like absorbs them, so they'll be in the American like system. The the nineties boy band. Alaska bought Virgin America. Oh right, no, right. right. Yeah. So a Virgin, will be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not gotcha. talking about Richard Branson. Oh, he uh, bike accident. Branson. Yeah, he like flipped off his bicycle. Was oh, it bicycle? Bummer. He's, he's I older. thought it was a bicycle. Yeah, he's an older guy. Yeah, you don't think like, of it because he's got such a youthful lifestyle. But smashed his face and his bike flew off a cliff and he almost bummer. died. Yeah, I think he said himself that he thought he was going to die. Yeah. And but it's just crazy that you can have all the money in the world, but one little whoops and you can easily die just as easy as everyone else. It's yeah. Crazy. No, yeah, absolutely. Look at the Imagine that, like a billionaire Richard Branson dies in bike accident. Could have been yeah. a real well, he, the was, guy he, was who, Star Trek he was cycling kid, British yeah. Virgin Islands. Didn't the guy who was like the one of the leads of Segway? He like yeah, he segued off a cliff. cliff. He just he went was, off a cliff. Uh, yeah, he was like... Uh, it sucks. It's really, like, it's really fun to think about that. <laughs> he was like a vice president of sales or something. Uh, uh, I thought he was higher than that. In the UK. I, yeah. Segway. So can I cover like really quickly topics that I've got in my list of things to talk about, but they're all depressing, so I'm just going to lump them all together? Go for it. Sure. Like lose your faith in humanity stuff. 
the EpiPen, which people use to oh. get over allergic, severe allergic reactions, has gone up five times in price over the last seven years. Yes, from one hundred to about six hundred dollars. And there's also the the apparently the woman who is the head of the company gave herself an enormous raise, and she was also head of this lobbying effort to make sure that all schools have EpiPens in them. And the cost of the drug that's in the EpiPen has not gone up. It's like pennies on the dollar mm -hmm. for this So you thing. just need a different company to make this device. They, have a probably, on they it. probably have a patent on it, yeah. They probably do. I had an EpiPen. Fuckers. At one point I had, I had I two that. of them. That yeah. sucks. Did you, still call jab, did you ever have to jab yourself? No, God, no. <laughs> nope, never had to. They were just, if I had an allergic reaction, it was there in case I needed it. That, they should have like, ah, oh, that's just so inhumane. Like... That's preventing a person from dying, and then they're, they're uh, usually a kid too. I mean, it's like a, usually it's kids who have these severe allergic reactions. It's Although shameful. I recently read something about a therapy for peanut allergies, where they're proving very effective. It's always that medical information you hear. It's like, oh, look, they cured this kind of cancer, and then you never hear about it again. You know, it's just like whatever happened to that thing where the lab rats all didn't get cancer and lived forever. And it's like, oh yeah, that was nothing. Sorry, <laughs> conspiracy Sorry. theory, Gus. Just need a headline a few years ago. Yeah. Comments on that. Uh, that's just profiteering. I mean, that's just trying to. That's the, the whole medical industry. Right. Though, isn't it? I'm going to end with that. I'm going to end fun. with a goofy, happy story. Next horrible story. Guy in Sydney, Australia, went into a gay club and is accused of replacing oh, the terrible. lube. There's a lube dispenser in the uh, restroom, and he's accused of replacing the, the lube with hydrochloric acid. Yeesh. And the reason they found the guy is because there's alarms on the lube dispensers because this kind of thing has happened before. So the oh. he's trying to like That's burn dude's dick yeah. with acid? Yep. Yep. That's fucking Get crazy. Get life, you bastard. And then there's another complex issue. Very complex. What, which, what happened to that guy? I don't know. That, I think he was just literally this weekend was arrested. I mean, that like that he goes out of his way to do oh, this. Oh, what's wrong with this guy's life? the hydrochloric acid. What, have the, what has Fucked anybody up. done to him? To cause him to go and want to do that right. shit. What, what, is, what, is, what does he think is the threat to him, right? It's just like, what a fucking lunatic. What a fucking lunatic. I hope, they, fucking lunatic. I hope they put him in like fuzzy handcuffs when they took him out. I hope they, don't, I hope they put him in fucking hydrochloric acid. Well, I don't hope they put him in hydrochloric acid, but luckily nobody was, was hurt. That'd be, that'd be awful. That'd be fucking disfiguring. Mm -hmm. um, On your dick, too. So this is a more complex one. Ouch. France banned the burkini. The yeah. burka swimsuit. And, and they started trying to go after yes. people who posted a particular image on social media of police with guns forcing women to take off burkinis at the beach. It's fucking crazy. Force them to take them off? Yes. Yeah. Be naked so men beach. with guns are forcing women to take their clothes off on the beach. Oh, 2016 and, fucking sucks. And if you share that image, uh, the, the French, French government, government has threatened to uh, take action against yeah. you. Even I, don't if you're in, I don't know if it was like at a federal level or if it was like provincial for... Uh, nice, but yeah, they're they're not happy about that. And their and their reasoning is that they don't want any religious imagery on their beaches. Right. Do you think even it gets though better? there's loads of images of nuns just having a laugh all over the beach? Do you think it gets better or worse from here? Like, do you think like 2017 is gonna be just as shitty, or do you think we'll like look back and be like, that was a bad year? Because this year fucking sucks. Well, I mean, Depends it how sucks for different November. people in different ways. Every year does, doesn't it? I yeah, but I feel like this has been like a, a giant shift upwards for mass shootings. Terrorist attacks, just like, I guess, celebrity deaths, but that's like a small... There's mass shootings every year. Yeah. There's a lot of mass shootings every year. Celebrities die every year. Well, no, no, no. I, I, the celebrity dying thing, that's just whatever. That's auxiliary, but... Uh, I don't know. Never mind. It just feels like 2016. Maybe because it's just a fresh wound, but I feel like a lot of shitty ha stuff has been happening this year. Yeah. Compared to uh, most. So here's another personal one. This hits a little bit closer to home. Go on. A friend of mine, Jess, Jess Versteeg, she was on Amazing Race with me. She's a gorgeous girl. She was formerly Miss Iowa. She started a business where she lives uh, in Northern California. So she's in the state of California. She started a business which is subscription boxes, premium subscription boxes for uh, medical marijuana. So where marijuana is legal in the state of California. She has a subscription box. You get like... All, you know, items associated with marijuana. You know? Does it come with weed? Like pops, cake pops, cannabis bath bombs, that kind of thing. And Vogue did this whole article on it. She launched this business, and Vogue does this article about it. It's really cool. This cool subscription box you didn't know you needed, you know, and if you're in the state of California, you can do it. So, she, like I said, she's from Iowa. One of her friends back in Iowa said, oh, look at my friends in Vogue, and posted the story on Facebook. Her friend is a cheerleading coach. The fucking school brought her in and asked for her resignation because she posted about her One friend's, friend's business in wow. California. Just like, like on the spot is trying to fire this, this woman 
because she posted about she's proud of her friend and just and just linked a Vogue article, which I'm sure you could buy the fucking linked Vogue article. A national publication about something that's legal in the state where it's happening. Yeah. What, did, what, what does she say along with it? Was she like, I, I don't know. I didn't see the original post. I think maybe the original post was removed, but I did see on the Facebook some of the things she had posted uh, afterwards. But I, from what I understand, it was just a post where she shared Jessica's post and said how proud she was. Here's what I would have done. That's not my Facebook. I don't have Facebook. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Fuck off. How do they prove it's yours? Well, I mean, also, but at what point is it about the principle of it? I mean, it's like, I, I, on one hand, I get it. It's school, and marijuana is not legal where she is, but she, I don't think she's doing anything to promote that. I mean, it, 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 kids can't drink, right, if she posts a photo of her drinking. Yeah, a glass she, of wine? Yeah. Is that, she? you know, is she trying to... Uh, you know, have the kids be, is she trying to, what's the, what's the word I'm looking sucks. for? Corruption of a minor. What's the word? Yeah. But no, what's the, what's the charge they give you? Contributing to the delinquency of a minor? Yeah, you are, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think if she posted something about alcohol, she'd be doing that. It's just mm -hmm. like, what the fuck? Someone's going to lose their job over this? It's crazy. And I'm sure it'll be this thing where it's like, it'll go back and forth for a while and they won't be able to back down because there'll be more public outcry about it or something like that. But it's just ridiculous, man. Mm -hmm. It's both, ridiculous. Both of my parents are teachers or educators. And I always fear for my dad because he's a football coach and like, you got to yell at your kids and stuff like that. But he's actually talked to me. He's like, you know, I'm honestly like really worried because like I, a teacher in the district that he works in kind of got let go because of something that happened. We'd be very vague about it, but like, it's just like, it sucks like this day and age with social media and just shaking around. One kid filming you at football practice, like you chewing out a kid, and it's like, it goes viral and then you get fucking fired. So, it sucks. Everybody's sucks. overreacting. So, here's a weird positive story. Okay, I was about to say, do you have a positive segment? story now? I do. I have a weird positive story. I read this amazing article about this guy who spent seven years in federal prison because he was a NASA intern. Oh, yeah. And he stole from the NASA vaults, a bunch of moon rocks that had been researched on, but then they were considered to be contaminated-ish, mm. contaminated-ish, because they had been opened on Earth, so they were stuck in storage. So he went and got them all out of storage, stole them, brought them to a motel so he could bang his girlfriend on moon rocks. <laughs> and then seven he went years. to prison, federal <laughs> prison for seven years. So you can't put a value on how valuable those rocks are. There's no way to... I thought you, you would probably, I thought you probably just say, take the entire... Amount of money spent on the space program yeah. Yeah. and divide the number of pounds of rocks I thought you were gonna back say you by can't that. Put a value on how romantic that is. <laughs> the guy was like, It's gotta be uncomfortable. Like, hey, baby, you wanna bang on some rocks? <laughs> Moon rocks. He went to jail for seven years <laughs> just for that one cool moment. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, say he banged his girlfriend on fucking moon rocks. He went rocks. to jail for seven years for 10 there's, seconds of fun. But you're not on like, the moon <laughs> until you've got more of the moon than the moon has. Okay. It's, so not a, you, it's not a crime if it's on the moon. There you go. There's dudes <laughs> in prison. They're like, I'm in for murder. What are you in for? It's like, oh, I stole rocks I from stole NASA. the moon and fucked my girlfriend on it. <laughs> Damn, that's hard as shit. <laughs> I fucked my girlfriend on the moon. So that reminds me of another story that I read where um, this is maybe a more <laughs> depressing one. This guy got arrested uh, in New York for shoplifting. And while he was being arrested, he resisted. So he was also uh, charged with, you know, he was charged with uh, another crime as well, like, you know, fighting off the police, resisting arrest or whatever. And while he was in prison, his bail was set at $25,000. The prosecutor threw out most of the charges, left him only charged with the shoplifting. So his bail was reduced to $2, but nobody told him. And he spent five months at Rikers Island because his bail was $2. For two bucks. And he didn't know that he could have bailed himself out what for two bucks. What a waste of life. Five months in prison for Why two dollars. Why two dollars at that point? I they think just it, was, it was like it was the value. minimum. It was like it was two charges he was left with, and the minimum was one dollar a charge. And I the feel judge like most reduced fines it. are so, like one hundred and twenty. This seven. was just to bail. This is just to bail right. out. Like before the that the had trial. to go through a series of hands in the system, and someone must have been like, "Oh wow, two bucks!" Like no one noticed that, and, and fuck, that's it's, like people are ganging up on him at that point. Yeah, people are just like, "Oh, maybe I didn't see that it's two bucks." Yeah, Put that away. That's fucked. Yeah, so that's unbelievable. Uh, I think that was on the yep, it was on the New York Daily News. He's a man from Queens, two dollar bail, five months at Rikers <laughs> Island. Unbelievable. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Anyway, any other topics that we didn't get to tonight? Um, I don't think so. South Park was recently lauded for being the only animation that was made during the SD era that made the transition to HD because they saved all their scene files. And just re-exported them as HD. 
Oh, they future proofed. I got fucking furious. <laughs> I got so furious. First of all, it's not even close to being true. There's there's hundreds of animation properties that were made SD on film, and they re up them to HD. Yeah, you just at a later re time. all the cells. But I just think about how many years we spent re upping. God. Uh, red versus blue to HD, and it's like. It's but like, that oh. was actually that had to be redone though. Yeah, well, I mean, it's still the same animation, right? I mean, it's still... No, I know, but with South Park, it's just saying they just just exported them again at higher res. They were getting credit for being the only SD-produced animation, which now has an HD version. We can beat them. (laughs) We just go back to all the old animated adventures that are shot, that are filmed in the 4.3... And we just re-export them as 4K. Yeah. And we'll be the only animation property ever to go from SD 4.3 to 4K. Do it. Only ever. Only ever. Yeah, even South Park's available in 4K. Nah. We do the entire animated Fucking adventures jumps. back catalog. Why did we stop at 4? We do 8K? Let's do 8K. We could do 8K. There's no player for 8K yet. I mean, it doesn't can, matter. You could play 8K Why don't we do 32K? Who's going to prove us wrong? There's no 8K displays, are there? There's 8K displays. Also, you can make an array from 4K you can make an array. There you go. For play. Let's do that. All right. Well, it's about time to wrap up. Uh, that's normally when I pause and he stops me, but he didn't. So nope. thanks everyone for watching. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. I'm coming home, baby. Get the moon rocks Bye. ready. <laughs>